This is the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. It's a 2020, and here's the key. You can see it's got normal buttons on it, but then there's this button here, which is probably preconditioning, I'm not sure. And then of course there's a charge point card, which means that I can plug it in at the uh, charging station and get some kind of electric range out of it. So this will be an in-depth view, basically, of this new-ish, very popular in Europe uh, SUV. Now, I owned a Mitsubishi Montero back in 2000, and this is as big inside as that was. But on the outside, this is obviously smaller because it uh, doesn't really have that off-road capability that the Montero did. So we'll explore this car over the week, and I'll do all my segments here uh, covering this vehicle, and we can see what it's like on a daily basis. This is my first experience with this car, and... Uh, 3,700 miles on the car, and here's the window sticker. All right. 2020 Mercury Gray exterior, 2 liter with twin electric motors, okay, one speed transmission, 50 state emissions. Okay, so you see right there where it says 74 MPG E. I'm going to talk to you about that pretty soon. I'm going to do a separate video on MPG-E, because, you know, <clears throat> well, just watch the MPG-E um, video, and it'll explain <laughs> that nonsense. Uh, okay, so 43 is the grand price, and this does have a, well, it doesn't say the kilowatt hours. Where is it? I don't see it. Yeah. See, I don't know too much information about this yet. We do have a 22-mile all-electric range, but I don't know anything else. And that's kind of the beauty of the way I'm doing this video is not too many people know about EVs these days, but um, I'm going to say it. 2020 will be the year where EVs start hitting the market in the U.S. and start getting popularity, and I think it's important for everyone to learn about uh, the differences here uh, between a regular hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. And I'll tell you right now, you want a plug-in hybrid. You don't want a regular hybrid. And it's not because of the tax incentives. It's because of, well, the, the parking incentives. Like, you know, you get to exploit all the city parking spaces and, and uh, park in very, very good spots sometimes in some locations for EVs because this is actually an EV with an internal combustion engine. So... That's kind of how I'm viewing this. I'm going to drive this. I'm going to get some coffee or something. And uh, I'll give you my take. So let's start this thing up. Uh, foot on the brake. And whoa, this looks weird. This looks like a yoke out of an Airbus. There's a park button down there. Okay. It's kind of trippy. Phallic and trippy. That's not the start button. Where is the start button? Oh, it's over here. Okay. Well, it's on. The engine's not, but this is. And they didn't even drop it off with a full charge. It's got 39%. So I don't have a charger here at my parking spot in my condo. So, uh, you know, we do have mm, electric meters right there, but they're not my meters. So, um, yeah, that's a downside. But this is kind of like the life for a lot of people in America because, you know, these are older buildings and they're not made for EVs. So this is why a plug-in hybrid makes sense and why it doesn't make sense. But we'll figure this out. You know, I'm, I'm not adverse to uh, showing you my, um, <clears throat> what would I say, uh, uh, you know, I'm not invincible and I'm not, I'm not perfect. So that's basically what I'm going to start with. All right, so left mirror, just my mirrors, and then hit the road. 
Okay, I managed to sync my phone. And I push this button down here, which was EV. I set the parking brake, I turn on my heated seat, and then I saw this button, charge. So I hit charge, and it turned the engine on, and now I sound like I'm in a prop plane. But it's actually charging just a little bit. You can see there on the on the needle, or maybe it isn't, I don't know. But if you look here, it's showing me some of the electric stats. So right now, I don't know what any of this means. 30 kilowatts, I think is what it's getting. I don't know. Let's reset accumulated amount. Okay. And we see our instant fuel consumption, our system power, accumulated charge. Okay, so ch what are settings here? Reset timing, power off, drive. Display limit of accumulated. Okay. Peak hold. <laughs> Don't know what any of this means. Don't think anyone ever is going to know. Energy flow, that's pretty simple. Uh, we gained an, a mile of range, I guess, idling here, which is probably like 250 watt hours. Uh, let's see. Trip. Okay, so two miles per kilowatt hour. So that's about 500 watt hours per mile. And let's go back. Fuel history. So everything's been reset. Fuel consumption, electricity consumption. Okay. Oh, oops. Let's go to info. Okay, so I got everything on auto. Normally, for the most efficiency on electric vehicles, you want to turn the climate system off and then rely on your heated seats in the cold weather. But today, I'm just going to keep everything on. What I want to do, though, is put that on. Put uh, this on, and we'll just keep with energy flow right now. So we've got 38% of EV driving. It doesn't tell me the range in electricity anywhere on here that I can tell. So we'll just uh, we'll go to the monitor for a second. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll turn off the charge. We're still on. The engine's off. And put it in reverse. It doesn't actually, yes it does, it shows me right there. To the right, uh, just like in the Prius. Huh. There's that little icon there, Mitsubishi Power Sound System. Well, it's a sticker. That's the sound it makes on the outside. Huh. Kind of like a Fisker Karma. Let's put it in drive. Sound turns off. Interesting. Huh. Then you get your normal EV thing. Okay. Speed bump. Alright, this should be fun. I'm going to get my coffee. We'll see what the trip status is like, or if the engine turns on at all when it's in this EV mode. Let's see, do I have EV mode on? I don't think so. EV. There we go. Normal EV. Okay, so <clears throat> there is a twin motor four-wheel drive lock, which I'm assuming puts on the uh, electric uh, and gas motors to run all four wheels, you know, two axles, but We'll talk about that later. Right now we're in EV mode. I'm just going to enjoy trying to get to my coffee on coffee on electric, even though it's 11.30 in the morning. Uh, I'll do it anyway. What else? Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else right now. The interior looks pretty good. I like the quilted leather. We'll look at that later. All right, I'll continue. Before we go too far, I just reset the trip odometer, so trip A is at zero, and we're gonna see how far I can get on all electric today with 39% uh, charge. And if I go here, 
I can change that menu. Trip B will reset. That's that'll be for the whole week. Okay, so yeah, battery. Okay, interesting. I don't know what any of this means, but that's the point. Newbie. Let's go newbie here. Beginner's luck on everything. We'll see how that works out. There's no navigation either. I didn't see that. Let's see. If I go back to home. No nav. So this is one of those cars for those people who like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is all I want. My car, bro. Well, jeez. You can't, you can't integrate with the uh, functions of the vehicle that way. I don't want to have to connect my phone to everything. I'm not a fan of Android Auto, Auto Apple CarPlay at all. So this is a... Uh, this is not a bonus in my mind. This is a total uh, cheap cop-out. All right, so let's go back to energy monitor. <clears throat> All right, there is some regeneration here as we come to this stop sign. Stop light. Uh, I don't know if there's really a way to hold regen on or off. We do have paddles, even though there's... I don't know what the paddles would be for if there's a one-speed transmission. Maybe it's to control the regen or the coasting, I don't know. But we'll continue and we'll find out. Well, just a mile and a half into it, even with a 39% uh, charge on here, the engine kicked in. So there's uh, not much here to go by yet. So... Uh, the engine kicked in, even though I was in eco mode and EV on, 1.5 miles. So you can see there's uh, no range on the battery there. So I can't really give you electric range other than 1.5 miles so far. And even in EV mode, it says not available, battery charge low. So one and a half miles at that range. What did I, what did I get? Started at 39%. It's still at 39%. But it's still on EV. I don't get it. We'll figure it out. We got a week. All right. I've got my coffee here. Put that in there. And we'll start it up. This power button is in a weird spot. There's like a blank out for where the key would normally go. But then they've got a power button up here. All right. So... I guess starting it up, it always defaults into EV mode, and then you'll see it says normal. But if I go down here, there's an eco button, and if I push that, it goes into eco mode. If I push it again, it goes back into normal. And by the way, there's no volume button. There's just a very bad design here of a, of a touch tap. Uh, the volume here is this as well. So, there we go. <clears throat> now, I guess if I push EV, it's EV again. If I push it again, it turns off. I'll put it on again. And if I go to here... So all of a sudden now you notice the battery is strong enough to put in EV mode again. So, uh, yeah, 2.4 miles. So, you know, on a car with a 22-mile range, you know, back and forth, 5 miles for a day... Seems to be okay. 254 miles combined range right now. And I do have a full tank of fuel. So uh, today, let's just see how I go. There was one thing I saw there that said like, where was it? No, I guess I'm tripping. Yeah, okay. Bam. Get my seatbelt on and we'll drive. All right, so I'm messing around with the paddles, and I see it right now. If I pull the paddle, it goes into Regen 1 or Regen 2. So that's good. So the left paddle increases the Regen, and then the right paddle basically goes into Coast Mode. And let's see if I hold it down. Does it just default to... Nope. Every press. Okay. Well, that's good to know. See, that's the thing. A car should be... Able, you should be able to get into a car and not have to read the manual. Uh, the car should be very intuitive so that it, it doesn't uh, confuse anybody. All right, let's go for it. Floored. 
So it's obviously a CVT. Not impressed on the uh, performance aspect. And the handling, there's a lot of body roll. some kind of blind spot monitor, but I don't see it working. There's a button down there to activate it, but it is on. Right there I can see. Alright, so B2. If I take my foot off the accelerator, you can see it charging there, but if I pull it, oh, there's a four, five, five. Oh yeah, it's much stronger now. You can see the better charge there. I like B5. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, I think when you have an electric vehicle, you should be stopping at the stop sign completely, so I just did that. I do wanna say, I'd rather have this immediately, I'd rather have this over a, a Lexus NX. This has the same kind of ride, but you know, like kind of rocking horse on the springs. It feels like this, but this is a much bigger vehicle to be in. So I prefer this. However, there are a lot of rattles in here. If you listen carefully, there's some rattling going on. So for a car with 3,700 miles, uh, but it is a Mitsubishi. Uh, I'm not surprised that it, the Mitsubishi would be doing this, but at the same time, I don't expect a car with this many miles to be doing that. All right, so uh, there we go. Coffee trip seems to have done nothing. We're still at 39% on our EV battery, and uh, there's no range yet. If I go here to change my range. <clears throat> 5.8 miles. There we go, no range on electric yet. But uh, eventually I go get... Well, I'm going to walk to lunch, but eventually I, I will... Uh, probably go to the store or something later today and it'll be a further trip and we'll see uh eventually what today brings to all of that so uh, i'll catch you in the next clip here pretty soon let me just park it and i'm wondering too because it's a one-speed transmission now that we're stopped instead of doing the parking brake and putting it in park what if i just push the power button it puts it in park if i take my foot off the brake do we roll forward Okay, so it doesn't auto set the brake, but maybe there's a setting for that. We'll find out. We'll find out later. All right, I'm at a uh, shopping center. This is the shopping center in Dallas that got nailed by the tornado. But the charging stations here, they thankfully have a few that are running. So I'm going to see if I can charge this car because it wasn't 33% charged when I got in. It was. 33% hybrid usage or 33% EV usage uh, over the trip. So uh, it is low, it is dead. So let me charge it. I don't know how to do that. <clears throat> is there a charging port up here? No. Where is the charging port? Okay, the charging port's. I'll have to back it in, I think. Let me turn it around. So the gas is on the left and the power is on the right. But you gotta back it in. Okay, even one backing it in here. It was about good. Uh, notice there's a 360 degree camera. Uh, this is not a very clear screen, but it is a good image. Um, and there is a radar sensor apparently. Let's see if I get closer. Does it beep? No beeping. I'll roll forward again just a little bit. 
Okay, <clears throat> so the charger's on the passenger side, the fuel is on the driver's side, but they're both in the rear. So that means having to back up into the spot. Um, you can see in the mirror the chargers, and the space is limited, but let's do this. Turn this off. Got my marijuana leaf on there. there we go. Well, it isn't marijuana leaf, but you get it. Ready to charge plug-in vehicle. <clears throat> this is the problem I've got with uh, EVs in general. I think that's this charger, yeah. What else do we have here? Chatamo and 1772. That's the fast charger, which is amazing that this vehicle has that. So we take this here. Oops. And we're dead, by the way. So because it has a gas engine, we're still able to drive it. Okay, this is waiting for vehicle, vehicle charging. Forty-four watts, one hundred eighty-four. Uh, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to lock the car now and uh, do some shopping, I guess. I don't know if there's a lock on this. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look locked to me, but that lock on the thing could be broken there. Either way, uh, it's plugged in. <coughs> well, I think that damage is from a tornado. Yeah. Wow. So across the street there is where all the tornado damage was. It ripped through mainly the other side, but this place was also hit. Uh, crazy stuff. So there's a Barnes & Noble over there, which is not a bad spot for a charger, especially when it's free. Normally they're not free. Um, of course, it's like not the fastest charge. at all. Of course, there's a Tesla mooching and a Leaf mooching, so I don't expect a lot from this. Unless I get this side. Yeah, there's nothing on this side. Okay. Lock it and walk it. Let's do something. Alright, alright. I rocked around the place. I completely walked around it and it's cold and I don't want Starbucks. I just don't want caffeine right now. I don't know, like five minutes. Let's see if it actually kicked up a little bit. 2,673 watts. Okay. So, uh... Eight minutes. If I go to Starbucks, it would cost me $4 to kill, like, another... I don't know, ten minutes? And that would get me half a cent worth of electricity. So, we'll see. Yeah, it just pulls right out. No lock. The irony is that I'm not one of those EV people, but I'm charging. Uh, there we go. It goes up in there like that. Totally broken clip thing. Maybe the hurricane broke it. I mean the uh, the uh, tornado. Okay. So there's that, and of course you can hear the diesel idling away right there. <laughs> but I'm not interested in killing time right now when it's cold, and I'm not interested in all that coffee. Uh, that's the thing. Charging stations are not at movie theaters. They're not at uh, gyms here in Dallas, at least. So you don't really get to spend much time, even when you're paying for charging. Even though the charging here is free, here in the mirror, 
I'm still paying for it by going to Starbucks there in that mirror. Uh, well, let's get to start start this. And I, I doubt we got really much power out of that. Let's see if ten minutes got us at least a mile. Energy monitor. What do we have here? Still no miles. Yeah, I don't get it. We just need more time on a charger. All right. Well, I'm glad I didn't spend time at Starbucks. Okay. Good morning. Time again for coffee, and let's start this thing up for a second. All right, it's EV only, but you'll see the battery there. It's almost like a third charged, and that's because yesterday I was like, hey, why wait around for charging when I can just charge it from the engine? And then it was like, well, you know, you do that, you're going to consume more fuel. But you see the EPA has something called EMPG, which means like the equivalent miles per gallon in electricity versus gas. And since this is a somewhat like a, what, a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack, I have to check the specifics. Uh, it would cost me a third of a tank, a third of a gallon of fuel to get the equivalent in electricity. So I figured, ah, charge it. So I actually got a half charge yesterday by driving it for like half an hour. And I was actually still going places. And I thought, whoa, Okay, so plug-in hybrid is fucking genius because I don't have to plug in ever and the engine can charge it as much as it wants or up to full and then I can also hold it so that it, it actually is available to me whenever I want it and I can just run on the uh, gas engine. So today we're just going to drive in a normal hybrid mode. I don't need a full charge. I will never need a full charge. That's my point because I have a gas tank. The full charge is really only for uh, complete electric only. And that, that range on the window sticker says 22, but I've read somewhere it gets 30. So we're just going to spend this week like figuring this out without, without, uh, you know, getting really concerned or involved or wrapped up in it. I would, I just want to go, Hey, I want to be in EV mode because I don't know why, and this isn't like it's a performance hybrid or anything, but but uh, it is raining today, and I'm thinking maybe, well, that's a four-wheel drive lock, but there's no, there's no diff if the rear motors, so there's no diff because the rear motors are not coupled to the engine. So I don't know what that button really does. We're going to try it today in the rain, and, and we'll see if I kind of get like some some kind of uh, wheel spin because it's, it's you know, articulating or something's wrong. I don't know. But we'll figure it out. I do have to say to you, there's a speed bump right there. Almost hard to see. This thing does great over speed bumps. It's just such a long suspension travel that uh, you, can just, you don't even have to really slow down. I mean, you should, but you don't have to. That's just so smooth, buttery smooth. It's amazing. <clears throat> Sorry, it's still early in the morning. I'm clearing my throat. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's only 9.48. Kind of had a late night last night watching my YouTube stats and getting over these allergies or whatever the heck it is at this point. I don't know, but uh, it's pretty cool because all this rain, I... Went to the grocery store, made dinner. I still have some left over. So, working from home is a blessing and a curse, I'll tell you that. But it's great when nobody's on these roads. All right. Coffee, 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 coffee. Well, the engine kicked back in. You'll see the battery's uh, zero, basically, the charge. And the engine uh, kicked in about three quarters of the way in the round trip, so uh, it didn't start off with a th uh, you know more than a third. So that's pretty good, 
considering like, oh, I could just go down to the shop and back and, um, theoretically it wouldn't cost me much at all. I mean, electricity does cost money. It's not like it's free, but I'm just impressed that the charge mode here was able to put so much, uh, reserve in the battery that I could go almost four miles and it wouldn't have cost me more than a third of a gallon of gas uh, to get a full tank. So, I don't know. Just thinking about the whole complexity of it without nerding out would be... Uh, let's see. Energy flow. I, I should have shown the range there on the electric first. Uh, now it's in a hybrid mode, which is okay, but... You know, I don't. I don't think I'll ever get to a full tank here. I mean, a full charge here, unless I plug it in, which you can, which is the benefit of this car. Like, I can go downtown and park in any EV parking spot, which is usually like a kick-ass spot, and charge. The thing is, you'd have to pay like two dollars an hour to charge because charging is not free. So, two dollars an hour would only get me like ten miles of range at most. And that would cost me more. That would cost me about a gallon of gas here in Texas. So a gallon of gas should theoretically have uh, 60 miles of range, according to MPGE, which is why MPGE doesn't make that. No, 74. So $2 would give me 74 miles in range on electric. So none of that makes any sense right now. And I'm going to do a video here about EMPG pretty soon. But, uh, you know, if you're window shopping for a car, you're, don't look at EMPG. It means nothing. It means nothing. What you need to know is the battery size, so the kilowatt hours, and then the charge controller, which is how fast that battery can charge. It just went off on brake because I thought those parked cars were almost in a crash. It does that on every approach to that corner. Anyway, you need to know battery capacity, the charge rate, and from there, you can figure out how much energy the car burns per mile. So you'll see, this one doesn't show you, maybe it does. You would want to know how many watt hours per 100 miles it burns. And then you would know how far your efficiency is. And I think this thing would be like 500 watt hours per mile. So... I don't want to really dive into that side of EV stuff, because this has a gas engine, which can charge it, and it has a gas engine, which can take over when the battery is dead. So, see, now it's back in EV mode. How funny is that? Anyway, my point here is, you don't need to live the EV life, even if you have a plug-in hybrid EV, which is the beauty of this vehicle, and all uh, plug-in hybrid vehicles have this kind of beauty. I didn't do this much on the Prius because the Prius, there's two kinds of Prius. There's the Prius and then there's a Prius Prime, which is the plug-in one. And um, the Prius Prime is still a Prius. But this is an SUV, which is the beauty of it. All right, let me grab my coffee and we'll get out of here. Okay, it's another cold morning. Which means it's time to get coffee. So far I've done 54 miles on this thing. Uh, started up. The beauty here of a plug-in hybrid or of EV is that you can just start going. Uh, you know, you've got your heated seats. I've got climate control on. You could turn it off for better performance in electric driving, but you don't have a uh, engine to worry about. Hey, squirrel. Squirrel! <whistles> Bye, squirrel. Anyway, you can you can basically drive this uh, like you like you stole it from the very onset in the morning, which is good. There we go. Put that in reverse. Park the brake off. One annoying thing is the parking brake doesn't auto disengage. Not sure why. I've got a 360 camera and all that stuff. It's all good. And I have a battery, uh, another one-third charge, it looks like. So let's show you the range today, three miles. 
Now, I haven't put it in EV mode or anything. I've just gone in, started it up, and off we go. So, let's see what it takes to turn into a hybrid version or kick the gas engine on for charging, whatever it's going to do. Um, we'll see how long that takes. You'll notice, too, my use of electricity is now 33 or 37%. When I first got the car, it was 39 So I've just been using the engine to charge the vehicle, so I don't know if it's calculating that or what, but, um, you know, I feel like I don't know what that's what the benefit of that little number there is for. So we'll just keep going here. <coughs> what else can I tell you? Well, let's go through this menu real quick. That's obviously the way the power is working. It's electric. There's my marijuana leaf. What is that? I don't know what that is. Oh, geez. That's it. That's the same info as that. Yeah, that's a pretty useless one. Average miles per gallon. It's not going to register anything. Although you'd figure if there's an MPGE, it should say, hey, you know, this uh, 12 kilowatts of electricity you've used is the equivalent of, you know, like uh, 8 ounces of gasoline. But they don't do that. That's why I don't like MPGE as a rating on a window sticker. It's completely useless. You need to know kilowatt hours, you need to know watt hours per mile, and why bring gasoline into the equation? I just do not get it. I'd rather have, here's your range on electric, here's how long it takes to charge, um, and, and here is the cost of a charge. Now, of course, that depends on where you live, but what I'm saying is, so does gas. Gas is $4.50 a gallon in California right now. It's $1.99 here in Texas. So you'd think, hey, at $1.99, it doesn't make sense to have a hybrid or an EV, and you're right, but if you look at $2 an hour to park at charge point stations and charge, and you only get 3.5 kilowatt hours out of that, you're paying 75 cents a kilowatt hour, basically, something like that, 60 cents, and it's like, why would you do that when you can just put the car in charge mode, just hit that charge button, and boom, what you've got is a, uh, a built-in charging generator, and yeah, it's going to suck the gas down, but, I mean, what's our average MPGs? It doesn't even show me what our average MPGs have been. I can't tell you. Uh, huh. Anyway, we're, we're almost down to the engine kicking in anyway. But my, my thing here is, you know, a plug-in hybrid is much better than just an EV because, as you see, we're down to one mile. We'd be, we'd be screwed if this was just a pure EV. But I don't care. I don't have a care in the world. I have a gas engine, and it's going to charge this thing or keep me going. And the BMW i3 was like that. I know when I had range anxiety in the i3... Uh, the thing is, I'm not really looking to get 100% charge on the battery every night, like I did in the uh, I-Pace, the Jaguar I-Pace. <coughs> Just getting my coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Lane departure. I guess that's driving me crazy. Let's do that. There you go. There you go, it's down to zero on the range for electric. But you see it hasn't kicked in that engine yet. And I, I'm still using drive. I haven't used uh, the paddles to put in regen, but if I hit the paddle, it starts by B3, and then It'll slow the vehicle down. I mean, it's not... You can see there the charge rate in B3. It's... Brake? There's no one in front of me. What the hell are you talking about? It seems to accommodate 
stopped vehicles or whatever in other lanes or parked on the side of the road. It's not a very smart anti-crash system. Mitsubishi needs to improve that. Okay, the engine's still not on. Can I make it all the way to coffee without gas on a on a plug-in hybrid? The uh, camera angle here is kind of funky because the seating position in here is funky. The uh, door sills are like right at my elbows, basically. And I sit way above the dash. It feels like the top of the dash is at my belly button. Which is freaking weird. I'm sitting, but look at how high the roof is. There's still a lot of room here. So it's not like I'm way up in the vehicle. It's just a really odd driving position. It's obviously for much smaller, shorter people. And I say that because this car is a worldwide vehicle. It, it's sold all over the country, but it's also sold all over the world. To the point that out of every two sold in Europe, one of them is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So, I don't know what that is. What's that sound? It's still on EV, but I guess it threw in the defrost. I didn't touch anything. Park. Brake. What is that noise? That must be the defrost. But I didn't hit it, and nothing's illuminated for it. Hmm. Okay, so zero range, energy monitor, trip. So this trip was no miles per gallon, which is funny, because you get zero MPGs when you're sitting at idle in a gas car, but we didn't use any, so. And then we averaged 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Okay, that makes about, that makes sense. Fuel history, fuel consumption, well that's in this trip I guess. Yeah, you could see the consumption, I don't know, oh that's electric. So 54 mpgs and then we dropped down to 18 when I was in charge mode. But, uh, you know, Again, if you can charge while you're driving, you save time, and time is money, damn it. Okay. Well, there you go. That's the uh, P-H-E-V, the P-HEV, the FEV, the P-HEV, and uh, didn't use any gas to get here today. I'm sure I will on the way back home, but I won't show you that. That's the same thing I showed you before. Uh, interesting. So we'll go the rest of the day. We'll see, we'll see if... Uh, but I still have some charge left. Yeah, I don't know what to do at this point. I think I'll just keep driving it. Oh, look, I got a, I got a better marijuana leaf. That's the best marijuana leaf I've had this far. So I've only done 57.1. I might do a road trip. We'll see. You might not believe it, but the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in is the most popular plug-in hybrid in the world. What I want to do is uh, start this up. It's weird that I see an oil indicator when I start it up because it doesn't start with the engine. It just starts all electric every time, which is nice. I think that adds to the sort of like ease of drivability especially between the hybrid electric. So what I think is happening here is, similar to the BMW i3, is the engine just charges the batteries. Based on the energy flow that we saw earlier, it doesn't seem like the engine is driving the wheels. And I haven't done any research, and granted, uh, I'm assuming that neither have you, uh, when it comes to car shopping, you know, you just start getting your feet wet with these things, and you don't want to, like, totally nerd out on things you don't need to nerd out on, so what I want to do is uh, pop the hood here, and I want to see what's what's under it. That's the seatbelt chime. I didn't put it on. Okay, so we'll put it in park, we'll set the brake, we'll keep it running. 
definitely pops the hood, which is weird that there's a hood. I think it would be cool if this was blue contrast stitching to kind of match the blue in the logo. Maybe Mitsubishi will do that one day. Now, I did own a Mitsubishi before. God, can't get that. It's the tiniest. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so there's a hood prop. The hood is heavy. And this is the little thing. This little thing here. Itty bitty thing is what you use. Look at that. I can see the radiator fluid. So this is obviously some kind of flow here. I don't know what that fan sound is. It's probably conditioning the battery or something. So this is the... Jeez, I don't know what any of that is. That's probably the heating system. And then you got the tiny engine with a catalytic converter. That might even be an exhaust particulate filter down there. It's definitely not a turbo. Huh. So it's almost like this little engine is a generator. And the motors... This must be the converter. Converting the power to electricity. The battery would be back here. Oh my god. Oop, doesn't work. So when you leave the car running, it doesn't work. I gotta hit this button here. It's not even opening. Oh, it says close hood. Okay, there must be some reason for that. Well, okay, I can't explain much down here, so let's, uh... By the way, the hood prop clips into that right there, so... It uh, looks like it goes way over here, but doesn't. It goes right there. It's kind of weird. Jeez, that's heavy. Okay. Also, you know, compared to Toyotas, listen to the way this door closes. Pretty solid. All right. Open up the trunk. Right. Oh my god. Active. Oh, what does that mean? What is that little icon there on the right? What is that icon? I think that's this. No? What? One, two, three, four. Do I have to have the foot on the brake to do it? Turn it off? Now do it? Ooh. Okay. Lock. Unlock. It won't open. Now it opens. I don't know what any of that was about. Hey, okay. Oh, cool. We have the level one charging system, which takes about eight hours to fully charge. I don't know what's in this bag. Bag bagception. What is this? Ooh, okay. So we have. Hand squeeze, flashlight, warning triangle, gloves, duct tape, cable tie, shop towel, bungee cord, emergency poncho, ice scraper. It's kind of just like a weather kit. 
Not bad. Okay. That's interesting. So basically when you are looking at this video 10 years from now, your 10 year old purchase decision used Mitsubishi should include this. The work I do is so painstakingly thorough for you. I appreciate a like and subscribe. What else is here? What's that? This is just paperwork. Okay, jack, tire fit, fit kit basically, so it's no spare tire. Assuming the battery and motor is under here, let's see what that says. Do not use manual door fill located in the cover unless emergency below. Okay. Hmm. Power trunk closer. There you go. Backseat review. Okay, so first off, you pull this little tab. Nope. How do you recline these seats? Oh, whoops. I dropped the phone. Okay. I think you recline them here. There we go. Alright. So, there is headroom back here, but there's plenty of room here, but there's minimal room on my shoulders because I'm actually touching this headrest and it hurts. It's digging into my shoulder, so let's raise that. Okay, now it's pretty good, but if we lower this, and you can see it's closer to me here than it is to that passenger there. It's actually, it actually is. If you look straight down, it's on the uh, stitch here. Whereas over there, there's way more room. So there's more room on the passenger side. Rear seat. Oh. Yes. I believe there are. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you'll notice, too, my shoulder is not in the headrest there. That is weird. Okay. Uh, that's the back seat tour for you. There's one USB slot, and thankfully, a uh, 110, or 115, 100, whatever that is, grounded. And there's a button back there, or up there, to turn it on, or at least do something. Okay, let's drive this thing. Again, solid doors. Nice. Pardon me. All right. Uh, steering wheel position is pretty low. It's very low. It, it's low with the dash. So if you're my size, it's ridiculously low. It's just right there. Uh, so I put it all the way up. And as far as telescoping, I put it about halfway right there. It's, uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's not a it's not a very expensive car, even though some of you may think 43 is a lot. I'm sure you'll get a deal on this thing. Okay. Turn it back on. Reverse. <clears throat> and two, there's a camera icon right here. If you hit the camera, you get the curb view. So the right curb, so you can see if you're going to hit the curb. Neutral. Left and back is drive. So... You know, I, I, I realized, I noticed an engine, but I didn't notice the one-speed transmission anywhere, and uh, obviously it's front-wheel drive if that engine is powering the wheels, but I didn't actually see 
anything. I don't know, this thing is a mysterious vehicle. And I think we should just keep it mysterious. How about that? Maybe it doesn't matter. Like, in the future, uh, especially if cars are electric, it doesn't matter what that engine does other than keep the juice flowing, right? Okay. Our camera turns on automatically with the front camera. Okay. I guess it's because I hit that camera button. If I hit it again, there we go. It goes back into uh, the standard up updated nav system here, or screen. It's not a nav. It's just a stereo screen. And it's not that uh, Fender. Was it Fender or Rockford Fosgate? It's not that, that uh, markety gimmicky one. It's just basically a standard Mitsubishi one, which is decent. You got to remember, Mitsubishi made big screen TVs and other electronic stuff back in the 80s and 90s, so they know what they're doing. Okay, I'm going to drive. I'll catch up with you. I'm at this red light, and I don't understand why the engine's running right now. It's not charging either. And if I look at the energy monitor, sorry, the energy flow, I guess it's just charging the battery. So even though I'm not in charge mode, it just says normal there. Even though I'm not in charge mode, it's it's going to use the engine anyway to charge the battery. So uh, if I was to put the charge mode on, I guess it's the same thing. Oh, now the engine's off. Even in charge mode? No, it's just running lower. Okay. Let's turn that off. Okay, so we're now we're just in the standard mode. Whatever it is when you start it up. And this is the hardest car to shoot, I gotta say. To get you the right angle, I can't do it. Can't do it. Ain't gonna do it. It's not gonna be. I wouldn't say it wouldn't be prudent. But I'm just gonna say uh, this screen makes sense. Energy monitor does not. And I guess this is a different screen now from the previous year. Oh, this just looks a little funky. So let's see. We've got accumulated amount charge and then instant fuel consumption and then system power. Okay, so let me put it in charge mode. And now we'll see what our consumption is. See, it doesn't actually give me a readout of what the instant is. It just says probably midway is 30 and full is 60. Okay. Let's put in a B5 to generate power. Okay, so this is uh, how many kilowatt kilowatts we use. And kilowatt hours is probably the state of charge. So that's what's on the battery. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, and I guess the red line is the maximum regen I've done. That must be it. Okay. So it's really more or less about... Not, uh, not about fuel economy, which is totally in the face of these EPA things anyway. It's all about uh, power, electricity. And that electricity has nothing to do with charging off the grid. It all has to do with just the use of the battery. So my take on this right now is the whole use of this engine is to keep conditioning that battery as you're always driving it. So there is no need to really plug it in because the engine is obviously always doing its job charging the battery. So the battery will never really need to be plugged in, period. But you could if you wanted to, which is why you get one of these, so that you can park in the EV spots. Okay. And now you see the battery juice percentage has gone up a little bit. So we are getting a charge as we drive it. So in order to charge a car, you just have to drive it, which is pretty amazing. Hey, what other car do you know of that's not a plug-in hybrid that charges the, the moment you turn it on? It's funky. Like, well, the i3 will do it when it needs it. I don't think the i3 ever had that charge button down there. 
I don't think the i3 ever had a way to charge on its own. The hold button or the save button allows us to uh, use the engine, I guess, to keep the battery at the level it's at. So if we had a full charge and we wanted to use it later in the day, I guess you'd say, okay, save, and then use the battery later. But right now, charge mode, normal, B5. I like the regen, B5 level. I've tried zero, I've tried just using drive, which is basically like a sailing feeling. Uh, you just coast. And I would say, uh, you know, B5 is really good when you encounter traffic and don't want to hit the brakes. Like, that guy's hitting the brakes, but I'm just coasting down. A little flare action over there. Broken down truck. Uh, <coughs> surprisingly empty road today. Go over one more. So the speed limit is 70, and I figure, hey, while I'm doing 70, or using this engine, I might as well use charge mode. So there you go, it's showing the engine is powering the front wheels. I've never seen that one before. So on the freeway, it does it. Interesting. Then we hit traffic, and then we take our foot off the brake. That's not even braking, and we're slowing down. That's pretty good. So it's using electric and gas. That's what the red wheel, front wheel is about. All right. I like this. I like this a lot. And that's probably why this is the most popular plug-in hybrid vehicle in the world. It's sold. It's it, there, there are more of these sold than any other plug-in hybrid. And you might say, hey, well, what about the, Vol the Volvo T8, the XC90 T8? Well, that's a really expensive vehicle, and this is, a, this is like half the cost no matter where you are in the world. So this is probably the better purchase for a lot of people who are eco-conscious or want to save money. That's why they're getting something that doesn't burn too much fuel. So we'll see. What I really want to know is how far can I go on a full tank of fuel there while I'm going through all this charging stuff and just driving normally. So what I want to do is take it out of charge mode, hit the button. Okay, so we're back at normal. Whoa, he just cuts over. Good work. No signaling or anything. Idiot. Anyway, uh, back to where I was. Even without the charge mode on, we're still charging. And our range on the battery is still blank. So I don't know if I can hit EV mode right now. I don't know how fast or slow you have to go to do it, but let's hit it. Nope, it says not about not available battery charge too low. At least it doesn't say you're going too fast, like it does on the Toyota Prius, where you can't use all EV over 26 miles an hour, which is why the Prius is useless. Uh, what else can I say? I think that's it for now. I might have more info as we go. I think I'm answering my own questions at this point questions I never asked yet. But it's making sense. It really is. And it's a very smooth vehicle because it's one gear, so there's no gear change at all. It's just a smooth um, power delivery. There's no, there's nothing in, that gets in between the delivery of the power and the, and the uh, state of speed, which is really cool actually. I think maybe it's just a CVT. Um, I didn't get into those details either. I'm really more excited about driving it and showing you all about it rather than telling you all the technical details. Because if it works like it's working now, do any of the technical details matter? And I'm going to say, no, nothing matters. How is, how is it to drive? Is it comfortable? Is it fuel efficient? Does it, is it overpriced? Is it whatever? So I'm going to say, yeah, it's worth what it's worth. gonna get off here and maybe in a couple days I'm gonna throw it on the actual charger but I don't see the point in getting a full charge at two bucks an hour it's just I don't see that hello go move over rover 
That's t- no breaking right there. That's breaking. Fun. So the engine's still on. And it's just in whatever mode it's in. We're on slow streets now, speed limit's 30. And if I put it in EV now, oh, battery charge too low. So I guess that's the only point of really putting it on a charger overnight at home or something is so that you can have the ability to use it every day without having to go through the whole charging aspect of it. But to me, it seems like, yeah, yeah, the engine is off now. Now it's in EV mode on its own. Just so cool. This is the future, by the way. A lot of people say EVs are the future. Like, no, no, no. Uh, there will always be combustion engines. And this this combination here, I think, will be... You'll see these vehicles from now on for the next 20 years. Because electricity delivery is still unreliable in the United States. It's not like it is on some of those other channels, like Bjorn Island, where he's in Norway. And there's chargers everywhere. And, and they're all fast chargers. And, you know, he can go... A thousand kilometers in 13 hours, which is 620 miles. It's not that far, actually, and that's really slow. But still, he's able to do it. You couldn't do that here, not in the U.S. Below, like, 22, 23 miles an hour, that sound system kicks in on the outside so people can hear you coming. And the engine's back on. Weird. I'm going to put it in coast mode. There we go. And now it's just regenerating some power, even though it's in drive. Hmm. So I guess the reason why this is the most popular vehicle, not just because it's decent over a Toyota, but because it's semi-luxurious, you know, with this kind of like quilted leather look and everything, even though it's only two rows, it's not a three row because that battery pack, um, it just goes. And in the city, it seems very capable. It's not a bad place to be. It's actually kind of s- astonishing. This price, though, is more than the Mitsubishi Montero I leased way back in 2000. That was like a sticker of 36000 It's much different. Um, not the same vehicle as this. But still, somehow, this feels very uh, urban capable, very capable of driving in and throughout the city, which that Montero didn't. Happy Thursday morning. I am actually returning from my trip to get coffee today. I managed to get there on all electric. I didn't want to bore you with the drive because you've seen it twice or three times already. Uh, I figured, hey, you know, I can do it this time. And I did. I mainly used B0 and I coasted. And uh, yeah, it was easy. I had four miles of range on the battery. And as you can tell, one mile of range left. So When I got close to the stops, I went ahead and pulled the paddle here to put it into B5. I guess when you put it in drive, it defaults to B2. And then if you use your cruise control and set the uh, regenerative braking, see if I go down to B5 right now for this corner, it slows me way down. But if, if you use cruise control, change B5, B3, change your setting with the paddles here, which nicely, they're affixed to the column like in a Ferrari or an Infiniti uh, or a Maserati. Uh, <clears throat> this car is coming. If you, uh, if you hit the set button on cruise control, it will always default to that every time you turn cruise back on. So I'm going to put this back in zero right now, which is basically sailing mode. It's Christopher Cross mode. Uh, you, know, you don't use any energy, and it's almost like a non-interference aspect. So you could just go uh, forever. It just seems to continuously coast on no electricity whatsoever. So I'm now really starting to dig this car because it's doing a lot of things. It it has the capability to drive in three different modes, but I'm not bothered by which mode I want. The Toyota versions of the hybrids always have like different modes and different buttons and they override and, uh, wow, nasty traffic today. Must have been some kind of accident to be completely stopped. Anyway, in this kind of traffic, I'll put it in B3. And then 
just sort of like coast to the stop here. Oh, Jesus. Everybody stopped. This is no bueno. Luckily, luckily, I have cruise control so I could set this. But it won't set because I'm out of speed range. So that's a problem. The whole point of a, of a city car like this is to use it in the city. But I can't use it effectively if I have to go faster to set radar cruise. So I, I really wish Mitsubishi could fix that. If that car is moving, will it work? Nope. So that sucks. And I don't have navigation on here, so I can't see the nearest street. But I do, I still do like the car. Uh, it's not perfect, so I'm not going to put it on my best cars I've driven playlist. But it's not terrible, so I'm not going to put it on my worst cars driven playlist either. I do wish it had a better layout here for the cup holders and stuff for daily usability, but the rest of it's pretty damn good. Anyway, I might do a road trip on this and see what we can do. How, how long can I drive it? in normal mode to charge the battery, and how long can I drive it in charge mode to drive the battery? I'm not really interested in save, unless, of course, I get a full charge on the way to somewhere, and I want to save it for when I use it, but essentially, the way this car works, one of three ways, it's always going to be charging the battery, so I have no um, regrets not plugging in at night, not that I can anyway, but my whole point is, do you really need to plug this in to enjoy it? Can, do you, do you, like, like the Jag I-Pace that I had, it was like, well, I could not own one because I do not have a way to charge it. But can you own this, even though you don't have a way to charge it like you would an EV? And I think the answer is a very, very absolute yes, you can own this. You don't need a plug at all. The car does all the work. Example, this is an example here of B0. I'm just coasting. We're going downhill and then it's going to go uphill after about where that silver car is. And it just coasts. Now I'll give it some fuel or some juice. Uh, you can still see, even though we have no range left on the battery, it's still using the battery, but it's using the engine. I can't even tell the engine's on. And now, of course, B0 just coasting down this hill. And you can see I'm actually picking up speed. The only unfortunate part is all the rattles. But, you know, I guess that stuff can be repaired or maybe found, sorted out. Who knows? I don't know what kind of life this thing's had. It's only got 3,800 miles on it. All right, well, I'm going to go home, make my breakfast, and I'll catch you in a, in a while. All right, I'm catching you from a parking garage. I am at a Whole Foods, and it wasn't very hard to find the parking spot. I used the uh, Plug Share app, and it said it's by the doors. So here I am by the doors, and uh, yeah, let's see. All I need to do It's not that one, it's the other side. I keep forgetting. Here we go. It's cool that this is lit underneath. There we go. Okay, I guess you can't just take it out. You gotta authenticate. So here we go. It unlocks. You take it. Okay, of course, you get to deal with all of this nonsense. Okay, there's no status light here, but I'm assuming it's working. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go into uh, Whole Foods, waste some time. Okay, I was only in Whole Foods for a couple of minutes. I took it off the charger, and basically I got two miles out of it. That's a half a kilowatt that they charged the car with. So that's pretty cool, uh, and it was free. So uh, good to know. And there's one there for the Tesla and a handicapped, and there's one right behind me in my mirror there. Two spots, one next to me. And uh, yeah, so pretty cool.
Happy Friday. Let's go into reverse here. Oop, turned on my jazz. Okay, so you'll see we've got nine miles of electric range, and I'm gonna go get some coffee. Uh, I can't believe it's already Friday. They already told me next week I'm getting the uh, Acura MDX. And I'm already kind of bummed that I'm going to have to get rid of this car. I'm just starting to really understand it. And it's been an interesting uh, five days so far. And I'm going to do a road trip. But, you know, it occurred to me, like, when you've got this car, you're really just commuting. And you're doing it on daily trips that you're very familiar with. So you're going to know how to drive in uh, certain conditions all the time to maximize efficiency. So for me, it's like, hey, uh, let me use this thing in the normal mode rather than EV only. So I just start it up and drive. And I'm going to drive it in the way I would normally do it to see, number one, if it will do it on its own and all electric. And number two... If I have established a pattern or driving habits that have um, added to the efficiency of the vehicle. So some people may get a new car and then go, oh, well, over time it's getting better and better. But I think what's happening is the driving is getting better and better over time. So let's see if I'm right. So my theory would be, like, you know the subtle variations in the streets, and you're going you're gonna to be able to know, like, when to lift off and all these other things. But the thing about driving one of these is you have these paddles to add regen and remove regen. So in this case, I'll put it in B0. That way there's, like, no interference, and we're able to just coast. Coast, 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 coast. No no acceleration at all and just go right into the intersection here behind this car you just keep a flow okay I'm actually braking now apparently too when you hit the brakes you actually hit regen before you use the brakes so that's good you don't have to always coast uh, coasting is obviously better but you don't have to worry about using the brakes and having that ruin the regen capability. So here we are in B0, and we're just going to keep going. You can see it's downhill here. And if I'm not, if I don't use my pedals, will we gain speed? Right now we're like 25 miles an hour. You know, third, we're leaving a school zone. <clears throat> White line, boom, end of the school zone. So we're actually gaining speed now. You'll see it's right there, 27, whatever. And we got a red light up there. And the climate control is off, which is a real hog, an energy hog. So if you're really looking to extend your range, turn off climate. I have the heated seat on, and I can even turn on the heated steering wheel. There we go. Okay, so oh, we caught up to the red light. I'm using my brakes, which is actually just regen. Pure silent mode. That's kind of the luxury of this car. It gives you that EV silence capability that we get in Tesla's. And then as we accelerate, okay, the range has dropped by two, so we're at seven, seven miles of range. We don't know ever what the state of charge is here, meaning I can see it looks like, you know, four through two, two fifths of battery capacity, but I, it doesn't give you a percentage. And that's because it's, it's really just guessing. And a lot of people don't realize this, but EVs aren't really fully charged when they say 100%. And they aren't really depleted when they say zero. And this is the case here, too. When the battery here says flat, there's actually some battery left. It's never going to run itself completely dry. So you, you do have a uh, buffer, which is kind of the beauty of it. Like, do you really need to know all the technical nuances of this? Do you really want to nerd out on it? Or do you just want to have a vehicle where you can just get in and drive? And so far, it's been, hey, I've got a Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, and I'm just getting in and driving, and I really don't care. And, and some of you may think, oh my god, the life of an automotive journalist must be so awesome. Well, this has been my life this week. It's kind of been like, how do I convey to you 
my audience what it's like to have one of these vehicles. I can't just drive it like it's normal. I want to. I want to be there and say, hey, it's just like a normal car. Go get one. But I'm also intrigued. I'm being sucked in here by this technical stuff, trying to figure it out without reading the manual and trying to figure out, like, if I can leverage the tools here in front of me, such as, like, B0 and Regen, to gain maximum distance. And it seems to be, like, a pretty good thing. I know gamification is a term people use at corporate levels to kind of keep people engaged and interested, and I hate that term. I loathe it. I hate video games. I'm not a video gamer. Uh, This is real life. But I, I like to figure things out. And just because I have figured it out doesn't mean it was a game. But... Nice Porsche. Uh, What I'm looking at here is this thing's like 43 grand, and I actually enjoy getting in it. The ride is very cushy. It's not a terrible ride. And, uh, okay, tell me your choice the Miata or the Porsche? Money is no object. (laughs) I'm going to go for the Porsche. What I'm trying to say here is. Uh, it doesn't turn very well. Uh, the steering is absolutely numb, and there's no response. You just have to keep turning the wheel. Uh, it's not very good in corners. Caveat. So, I I uh, I want to do daily drives. I want to give this you the, you this information because I'm. This is like what it's like as an automotive journalist, kind of learning as I go day by day and trying to give you that story. And I think rather than go through all this and then recap it for you, why not just show you like, this is real life right here. This is how, this is how it goes. And granted, I don't have Canyon roads to carve through. Uh, I I don't really have a job to commute to. So the best thing I could do as far as a commute is just do my daily routine here, go to good coffee, tell you what it's like, what have I found? Well, I found so far, we've dropped four miles in range, and we are still on EV only, even though I haven't put it on EV only. So it defaults to EV all the time, which is cool. And now it's time for some coffee. So let's get my coffee. I usually come here very early in the mornings, around 11 o'clock. Got my jazz playing. All right. Cool beans. Put it in. The one thing I have as a complaint is the park button down there. Uh, you'd think like, oh, make it up here. No, because you probably hit that on accident. Park button maybe should be over here and brake. And then instead of this being four-wheel drive, this should be the power on-off button. So that I have to do everything down here. Boom, pull the brake, hit the power button, done. No, i got to hit the power button up here. The, they should swap the power button with the four-wheel drive lock button. That makes more sense to me. And, by the way, this light is not on for the power button, even though the engine's on. If I turn it off, the light still isn't on. So I don't understand. What is the light for? If I get out, it doesn't light up. If I turn it on, okay, it lights up. But not when it's on. Not when I'm running. I don't get it. Got my coffee. It already spilled. I'm on my way. I got a little warning that said possible icy roads. It is 36 degrees outside and it is Friday, which of course in Texas means by Sunday it'll be 90 degrees. That's just how it is here. So uh, it's nice to have a car like this where it's kind of versatile. I do have a sunroof. It's not a, a panel roof. I wish it was a panel roof. That would make it more competitive in the SUV segment. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. All right. This isn't fast. And I'm not going to floor it. I'm going to wait for the road trip video. Or, actually, I'll do the road trip in this video. I know how you all like my long videos. I appreciate it. Uh, You're a great audience. You really are. You should pat yourselves on the back. And hit that notification bell while you're at it. Corvette, Corvette, Corvette. Nope. Come here, come here, come here, come here. They got rid of their Corvettes. Huh. Alright, this thing really rolls and, hello, rolls in body corner, uh, body, (laughs) body roll in corners, 
But the suspension is very compliant. Like, this is the best car to go over speed bumps with. Nothing phases it. And I'm not sure I've been seeing lane departure warning. Well, it, actually, lane departure warning works. That's LDW. But this thing down here, blind spot monitor, there should be an icon in the mirror that goes on. And I don't think it works. Oh, there we go. It works. All right. Well, it's a Friday. And so far, my trip with the nine miles on the vehicle has been successful. So if you charge this at home daily, and your commute is under 20 miles round trip per day, then you're going to be driving basically for pennies. Because this is a 12 kilowatt hour battery. My electricity rate is different from your rate. My rate's a uh, very, very... Uh, generous, 6 cents per kilowatt hour, so 6 times 12 is, what, 72? <clears throat> and, uh, it would cost me 72 cents a day to fully charge this car and then go 20 miles. But look at the gas price, $1.97. So at $1.97, in this car, you get like 50 MPGs. And it's charging the battery on its own. And this is my theory still, is that the uh, EPA MPGE stuff is bogus. Because if the engine's charging the battery, and I've only paid $2 a gallon, and a gallon of fuel has 133 th uh, kilowatts uh, in it, then it would be cheaper to let the engine charge the car rather than charge it at home. Because I'm paying $0.72 cents a day or... 72 cents a day is half a gallon of gas, and I'm not using a half gallon, and I'm not necessarily always charging the car. It's charging it when it needs it. So this is the beauty of this car. I don't think any of you can understand it yet, but I never have to plug it in. I don't ever have to do it. And even to go my distance on my commute, I think half a gallon, which would be somewhere around 72 cents, uh, but I'm also paying road tax on that gallon. You'd have to think... Is electric actually cheaper? Well, if I'm at six cents, it's a tough call. But in your neighborhood, if you're paying anything over that, which is everywhere else in the country, if you're paying 20 cents, why would you even charge this at home? What are you thinking? I think you're an idiot. I think get one of these, get any plug-in hybrid electric like this one, and use the gas engine all the time to charge the car. Who cares what your fuel economy is? The whole point is to charge the battery at $2 a gallon in gas. Unless, of course, you're in California and your electric rate's 30 cents. But even if your gas bill, your uh, gas per gallon cost is $4, it's still it's still cheaper to use a $4, $4 gallon of gas to burn and charge than it would be to spend 30 cents a kilowatt hour at home to go 30 uh, 20 miles. I mean, think about how much more you pay in California, how much you're getting screwed to go 30 miles a day. They have basically engineered it there to cost you as much as it would cost to get a daily sub pass in, in Washington, D.C. or London even to get an underground pass for the day is like $12. So are you spending $12 in fuel a day Mm, only in California, I guess, because even if you had a car that got 20 miles per gallon and you're going 20 miles, eh, who knows? But uh, essentially what I'm saying is this, regardless of your uh, location and the cost of fuel and electricity, this car will save you money, but it will only save you money if you do it properly. And it's not about calculations and spreadsheets and that nerdy stuff. It's about, hey, I'm not going to plug it in because I don't have to. The The car will take care of itself. And it's sort of like, oh, it's a sentient being kind of thing. Like it, it can actually do its own thing. It's not like a Tesla, which I've always said, a Tesla is like having a dog. You come home, you plug it in. You want to leave, you got to unplug it. It's like, did you feed the dog? Did you forget? You got? Did you walk the dog? Like you have to do that every day for your dog or dogs, but you got to do it for your Tesla too. Whereas this thing, this thing, this thing's on its own. This thing's like the, the mistress. It's like, uh, 
it only wants certain things at certain times, you know, and you, and you just, you enjoy it and it's on its own. It's complete. It doesn't care if it's plugged in. You don't have to unplug it to leave. It's great. All right, I'm in my parking spot. I have two miles of range lift. Never used any gas, even to charge the car. And that's it. It made a successful round trip on all electric. And my marijuana leaf is at four out of five. Uh, yeah, I made it. I did it. I managed to do it. I figured it all out. Haha. <laughs> What else can I say? Oh, the power, by the way, that I generated was from the gas engine last night on the way home. It made nine miles of range. So I didn't have to stop anywhere. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to pay for charging. I didn't have to pay for parking. It did it on my way. So I multitasked. Tasked. And that's my complaint about regular electric vehicles, like the Jag I-Pace, is you got to go do something while you're charging. Go to the gym, go to the movies, go do this, go do that. Well, I'm already driving. This thing's already doing it. I don't have to worry about going to do something to waste 45 minutes. In my waste of 45 minutes of a drive, it's charging. And it didn't cost me anything, really. What I want to do, though, is fill this tank up before my road trip and see how far we went on how many gallons that we needed to fill up the tank. Because my suspicion is this thing could go really far in the city. All right, it's Friday afternoon, and the weather has improved. It's nice and sunny out. However, look at that. With the sunroof open, there's so much glare on the screen, I can't even see it. There's no anti-glare on this screen at all, which is unfortunate, because the screen is like the only thing in here that you can use to control the stereo and the phone and everything else. Speaking of which... In phone mode, I can't show you because it would show the phone numbers of people I know, but in phone mode, there's no way to check your text messages. You can't even read them from here. So the uh, system itself is is very limited. I wouldn't even say outdated or antiquated. It's very limited, and so you'd only be better off using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but when you do that, you lose the ability to see this uh, technical information on how the car is performing. But you do have the little screen here that shows you that, but it doesn't show you much other than this. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's not that not that informative and not that useful. So keep that in mind. It is just a vehicle for getting around town, I think. But we'll find out what it is like on the freeway over a long distance, and we'll see if, if this thing is really capable of being a good all-round vehicle. Right now, we're, we're just going on with our day. Ah. Uh. Ah? Uh, what the heck? I guess you have to wait for it. Whatever. Okay. Time for a road trip. I'm going to go to Austin. And you can see I've done 170 miles so far. Well, a a mile or two in addition to that. But what I'm going to do is go to Costco, fill up that tank, and see how much fuel we used on electricity, which is weird, to go the distance that we've gone so far, which was... Oh, wow, I've been averaging 42. See, it took a while to kind of get used to the car and also adapt to the roads with the car driving style. So I've done 170, so... Whoops. Ah. So by the time I uh, get to the fuel station, uh, we'll we'll get some stats here. We'll see what was it like. I wish it would default to that screen when I turn it on, but whatever. Okay, let me get my seatbelt on and hit hit the road. All right, well... Real quick, we have one mile left on the uh, battery, and then uh, looks like a quarter tank of fuel. And I'm at Costco right now, so I'm going to fill up, and then we're going to see how much fuel that took. And then we're also going to actually, on the road trip down, hit charge mode down here, and uh, see how many miles and how long it takes on the freeway 
to get to a full charge, or if it can even get to a full charge, while we're going on the road trip. And then when we get there, we're going to hit uh, save to see how this whole thing works. That's the whole point of this trip. So let's figure it out. Okay, I have the receipt right here. And give me one second. I'm going to make my way over away from the pump here. Okay, so let's turn that down. 173 miles, basically. And, well, 8 gallons of gas. So what is that? Uh, that's not very good at all. Let's see, that's 20, just over 22 miles per gallon, which doesn't make any sense. But I did use it to charge the battery most of the time. And, of course, that's when I'm in charge mode. Otherwise, I'm just driving along normally. So it doesn't make any sense to me at all, but I'm going to reset that. And then trip B will keep as my total. And then... Uh, we're going to uh, hit that freeway right there and make our way to Austin. So when I hit the freeway, I'll hit the charge button. Right now, you'll see the uh, energy monitor has one mile left on the, on the battery range. And then here, we're going to reset my accumulated amount. And then we're going to reset, uh, let's see, the trip. So I will reset that. Okay, and let's see. We also had auto reset off. Okay, good. So let's see what this trip gets out of this. Um, I don't want the charging timer. What I want is the charge amount. Yeah, okay. We're gonna reset. Eh, we'll keep it the way it is. All right, energy monitor. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I have to be in Austin by 1 p.m. It's not going to be possible. Go this way. So we're at zero. We're on our way. And this is the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Eight, eight gallons to go 175 miles or something like that. Is, let's see. 10 times 8 is 80. 20 times 8 is 160. And then... Uh, another couple gallons, 21, 21 would make it 168, right? Uh, so yeah, I don't get it, but we'll figure out what the fuel economy is on the road trip. Done about 0.4 miles before I hit that charge button. So now we're in charge mode. You can see the little icon there, blue charge, and it's doing its thing. So we'll see what it takes to get to full charge behind a Chevy shitbox from Mexico, or is that Ohio? Either way, oh, it's a spark, something like that. You're supposed to get on the freeway at the speed of 70. Oh my God, we're going to die. You can't get on the freeway at this slow speed. It just doesn't work. Uh, the passing power in this is not very good. Alright. So, we're on the freeway, we're in charge mode, and uh, the trick here is, people say use B0, so if I pull this paddle, I go into B0, which now there's no regen. And uh, with no regen, it, it just coasts effortlessly. I'm actually going to move over to speed at 70. These people want to do 60. It's ridiculous. All right. I'll, I'll give you an update when we get to the half charge state. There really isn't a percentage here on the readout, and there is no, like, middle ground, but I'll let you know what it looks like. This is uh, some road noise in here to be expected, though. It's from the tires, basically. I'm not even sure what kind of tires it has, but we'll find out in three hours when I get to Austin. All right, all right, all right, all right. Dallas, uh, we're going to leave this beautiful city and head towards Austin. So you can tell the difference here in traffic. Uh, 
in Dallas, this is bad traffic, but nothing compared to the bad traffic of Austin, which is a typical traffic of Austin. So, uh, I forgot to mention, I didn't put this thing in eco mode, so I'm going to put it in eco mode, so it's in charge and eco, and it's going to be putting some juice in that battery. Uh, I'm not going for an efficiency run, I'm just going for a time trial, basically. I don't know what the top speed is of this Mitsubishi. I don't really want to find out. Mainly because it doesn't really feel like a very safe vehicle. The suspension is way too bouncy and cushy and wallowy and just weird to give me any confidence at high speed. Uh, downtown looks pretty good. Alright. Also, let's see, eco mode, charge mode. Just gonna move over here. And we're in B5, so it's going to use the regen to slow the vehicle down. And it will it won't slow it down to a complete stop, but it will slow it down to a crawl speed and uh, it generates power but the engine's in charge mode everything's still charging and uh, I want to know how long it takes to get to that full charge or if it can even do it or if it stops at a certain point time wise or you know 60% something like that keep in mind that that 21 MPGs isn't offset by any real plug-in usage. I haven't really plugged in at all. So, the uh, gasoline has been charging the battery uh, to 6 miles, 8 miles, whatever, which isn't full charge, but I've been using that to maximize my time, because most of the time I don't have a couple hours, nor do I have charging at home. So my whole point was, could you still use this even if you couldn't charge at home? And the answer is yes. And at 21 MPGs, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously running on the cheap stuff, 87 octane fuel, which was a dollar ninety four. But uh, how much would it cost in electricity to offset that gasoline cost? And I think it would be seventy two cents a day. So it would have been five dollars difference. So, what is that, two gallons? Would that really have made a difference? Or is it my driving style? We don't really know. But on this road trip, I mean, I would say this is your worst case scenario. You could obviously do better than this. I'm, I'm pretty good at giving you the worst possible scenario. And this is Texas, of course. Uh, all right. Still got three miles. I don't know what the magic number is or the sweet spot is, but we're going to find out all these things. And I forgot to mention I have the HVAC off, which is the biggest consumer of electricity on the vehicle. So um, my range dropped, actually. My electric range dropped by two miles because I've been driving pretty hardcore here on the freeway. So there's a... There's a food for thought right there, a little tidbit, is... <clears throat> I've done 16 and a half miles on the freeway in charge mode and I'm losing charge. So there's a huge amount of wind resistance or some kind of inefficiency on this vehicle at 60 miles an hour or above. I'm not sure why, uh, other than the uh, size of the vehicle. It's not in twin drive mode, so the four-wheel drive thing is off. And... I'm losing range, even with the HVAC off. So let's go. Let's go full bore here. Let's turn it on auto. Get the HVAC going. Let's uh, turn it to 72. Hold on a second. I can't hold everything at once. Uh, now we're dropping down to one mile. You see that? As soon as I turn the HVAC on, if I turn it off, range goes to two. Turn it on. Electric range drops eventually. Pretty sure about that. Well, we'll figure it out. All right, let's move over. 
fast lane is the slow lane today. Let's go ahead and follow that guy. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, you got regen on. If I was to go into coast mode, it won't even slow the car down. You'll see your wind resistance, so... I thought regen would help charge the battery, but it's not doing sh squat. And then I'll turn off eco mode so I get better uh, performance, too, from putting my foot down. I all those people back there. It's kind of hard to tell. There you go. <coughs> people going slowly. All right, this is this is more like less more or less Texas driving. And can this Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV prove itself worth it? I think the whole concept of a car like this is you can put it in charge mode and go all the way down to Austin, and then when you get to Austin, put it in EV only mode and drive around your 22 miles or whatever. But in this rate, this rate, we're not we're not even going to get a charge at all. So I'm going to have to find a consistent speed to go and see how how that can charge it up. It's been 19.5 miles and we've got no extra range. And we're in B0 now. So the only thing charging this battery is going to be the, uh, what the hell is that? Oh, nice and not. That's ugly. The only thing charging this is going to be the engine. No regen. And we still got HVAC on. We'll see. We'll see. I have... I'm expecting a full charge, but it doesn't look like it. That feels like top speed. Alright, just cruising here on the freeway and zero range on electric, even in charge mode for the last 47 and a half miles. This thing is basically unable to charge because it's so reliant on the batteries to propel it. And it's obviously using the gas engine too. But my whole thing here is, uh, this is a lot like the Prius Prime that I drove. Uh, the Prius Prime was the only car I drove that didn't make it from Dallas to Austin on a complete full tank. I, I had to stop just outside of Round Rock, and based on the range here of 90, 196 miles, it looks like we'll be stopping at that same fuel station. With no power, by the way, on the battery, which is just what the Prius did, too. The only difference is that with this I can go in full electric mode versus the Prius doesn't go full electric over 26 miles an hour and you can't uh, really control the Prius as much as you can control this one. Regardless though, this is not going to hit my best cards after from playlist. The fuel economy is not what I expected. The charge rate is uh, too slow. It's faster to charge it with the engine than it is to plug it in. And the other aspect, too, is when you're on the freeway, I mean, it's a one-speed transmission. This basically isn't a car to go on a road trip in. It's only really to get around the city with. Even then, you're not at an advantage if you, if you don't charge it. So you have to charge this car. This car is basically uh, meant to be plugged in at the grid, which will cost me 72 cents a day. It'll cost everyone else more than that. And, yeah, if you had to take it on a road trip, you're not going to gain any efficiency on that trip, especially in Texas at these speeds. Uh, it could be different if you're in stop-and-go traffic or Austin. It, it might be a little bit better, but so far, I'm not impressed. 91 miles, 91 and a half miles, and still zero range accumulated on the battery. So, obviously, this is not your typical speeds in the rest of the country, but we're in Texas, and look at this. I'm not even passing anybody. I'm doing 85-ish. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to go get lunch in Waco, and we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I've almost got half a tank, too, so this will be interesting. All right, we just hit a bunch of traffic here. I'm getting off. And while getting off, basically, uh, they're supposed to yield to the ramp. Uh, I'm going to go get lunch because there's no point in sitting in that traffic. And we'll see uh, what kind of uh, range I get now. I'm still in charge mode, so it doesn't 
It doesn't uh, disable itself. I guess it would if I was to restart the vehicle, but at this point, I'm still doing pretty well. Actually, I'm going to get back on the freeway and then... Oh, shit. I need to... Get off, get on the freeway. Once I get on the freeway, I will uh, get off the freeway because I need to go one. Is there a game on or a crash? There's no navigation in this thing, so I couldn't tell you what's going on. Still charging. I'm sure we'll get some range here now. It'll be interesting. Full stop on the freeway in Waco. This is fabulous. Yeah, it's charging. There we go. One mile of range. Sitting here in stop and go traffic. So, maybe, now that we've proven that over 100 miles, you can't charge the engine. I mean, you can't use the engine to charge the battery on the freeway. Why don't I do something completely different? I'll keep it in charge mode in stop and go traffic, and then keep it in hybrid mode. So, I'll disable charge when, uh, or maybe I'll just keep it on save. I'll do something between Waco and Austin. So we try and get different results now over the next 100 miles. And by the way, 100 miles, half a tank. So, what is that, 10-gallon tank? I don't even know how big the tank is, but it still seems like I'm getting like 21 miles per gallon, which is ridiculous. I'd rather have a Mazda CX-5 at this point. $41,000 fully loaded for a CX-5 signature versus 43 for the hybrid. Just think, it's not even about saving money. It's just about uh, having a better ride. So... Yeah, it's, a all, it's all subjective. It depends on what your objectives are. Do you have subjective objectives? Subjective objectives? I can't even talk. Look at this traffic. <sighs> Look at that. Two miles of range in stop and go traffic. Which is weird because it's like, well, stop and go, you should be electric only. But I guess, no, you can't do that. You got to use... Uh, you got to use gas to charge it so that later on you could use electric only. I don't know. If we go to EV right now, boom, engine shuts off, normal EV mode, we're on battery, just like that. Shh. I hear nothing. The line inside the restaurant is so long, and the traffic here is so bad, and then I'm going to do drive through And, uh, yeah. All that uh, efficiency is always ruined in the drive through isn't it? That's what they get you. So one mile of range, 96 miles total combined, I guess. Which, you know, according to the EPA, let's see if I can do this just right, uh, 74 mile range MPTE on one gallon of gas, I should have like a gallon, two gallons left. No, I got half a tank, which means I've got like five gallons. All right, let me place my order. Okay, I just had my lunch, and we're back on the freeway. We're getting on the freeway. I'm in normal mode, not EV, not charge mode. We're going to see what happens here with... Uh, I'm, it's annoying that the home button's in the middle of the screen there. Go this way. This is an on-ramp in Waco. Huh. Looks like an alley. There we go, sunroof's open, beautiful day out, and ancient but new Lexus LX570, aka Land Cruiser, big mistake there. All right, we're on the freeway going for it, and we'll see now, uh, we're at 105 miles, we'll see what happens over the next 100 miles without using charge mode if we actually gain any range on the battery. Uh, on the freeway. Oh, it is beautiful outside. 62 degrees, nice and sunny, puffy clouds. It's looking good. And the road is more wide open than normal. So I've been keeping it around 80 miles an hour, very smooth on the throttle delivery, kind of staying in the eco mode there. I got B0 going, so no regen braking or no coast, just pure sailing mode, coasting. And we are gaining some battery, and we're not in charge mode. And I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. 
I've done uh, 21 miles ish, so 126.3 total, and I've got about a third of a tank left on the fuel and a combined range of 68 miles. So uh, we'll definitely make it to Temple, and then I gotta refuel there. So, worst ever fuel economy in any vehicle I've ever driven from Dallas to Austin. And what a shocker that is, because I'm in a plug-in hybrid. But it is an SUV, and I'm really not going for fuel economy. Uh, yeah. It is still uh, entertaining. It's a different kind of driving style, because it's electric, and it's and it's a one-speed transmission, and it's not all electric. You know, the gas is powering the front wheels, but it's different. Definitely different. Still rather have the Mazda CX-5. All right, 152 miles and 36 miles of total range left. You can see I got about a quarter tank of fuel, and there's a truck stop up here, which I'm going to stop at. We're going to see if I got less than 20 miles per gallon on the freeway, which is hilarious. Uh, we'll find out. Okay, I didn't stop yet for fuel. I decided to squeeze a little bit more out of it. 22 mile total range. And my fuel light is on. So now it's time to pray. We're gonna hit the uh, eco button and we're gonna try and uh, get as far as we can on the rest of this tank. You can see the fuel lights flashing. It looks pretty good. I don't know because I don't have GPS where the next stop is gonna be, but we're passing by some fuel stations. And we got 22 miles to go. Georgetown is like 18 miles away, so we'll see what happens. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, well, this ain't good. Uh, proper English would say this is not good. Georgetown, 11 miles. Range, blank, 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 blank. So, I just have it, it just said 22. And now it's at, now it's at nothing. So, I'm going to use my tripodometer. I'm going to say at 175. Wherever I am, I'm going to get some fuel. I'm not uh, adverse to that. I could probably get fuel right there at that shell station, but why would I do that? I could still see a line of fuel left in there, and if uh, any shitbox driver is a proper shitbox driver, they are going to keep driving that thing until the white line appears on the fuel. Uh, I might regret this choice. Dollar ninety-three. Yeah, we'll get off here. <laughs> ah, I bet you that screws you up in the head. Thank you, sir. Always yield to the faster car, and the fuel is on the driver's side. Da -da -da. Dollar ninety-nine. Boom. All right. Well, there you go. When you get to 20, it goes flat. We got fewer, uh, we got 167 miles on this tank. <sighs> That's disgusting. That's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Okay, I got my full tank of fuel and I've done 167.9 and I didn't get the, the, <laughs> the receipt because I was on a call and I'm in a hurry. But 167.9 ish on a full tank of fuel is pathetic so this is not the worst car I've ever driven it's just not as good as other cars and I'm done giving you the fuel economy of this car obviously it is the worst I've ever driven but it doesn't mean it's the worst car I've ever driven it, it's just kind of weird um, it's still good in the city it's terrible out here on the open road and I'm going to get back on the freeway and get down to Austin Maybe in Austin, you know, on the streets, it'll be it'll um, re recuperate or kind of redeem itself. But I have a doubts. I have doubts on that. I still like the one transmission aspect to the driving aspect. Uh, aspect, aspect. Cool. Well, that might be the end of this video. If it isn't, like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, and we'll see. We'll see if this video keeps going. I got to get back on that freeway. Which is a challenge. Oh, no, it's not. Ramp's right there. Good stuff. Oh, my 
my goodness. I got back on the freeway, we got to Round Rock, and bam, just as soon as we got to like the 79, Highway 79. Plus, I got a rock chip right there in the window. But now, we're in this stop and go, and I've got it in charge mode again. And we're going to see if I can leverage this stop and go traffic in the charge mode. Maybe I can get a half battery by the time I get close to downtown. That'll be interesting, because downtown's only like three hours away from here in this kind of traffic, which is only like four miles. I'm just exaggerating there. But I'm literally wanting to see if in B5, which is VGen mode, and with the HVAC off, and we're in normal, so I'll put it in eco mode here. And now, charge mode, eco, HVAC off, and <clears throat> stop and go traffic. Will this behoove us to charge the battery in a reasonable rate? Should I get off here? No, nope, I'm going to stay on. I'm going to get off. I'm going to get off. I'm going to get off. Look at that. Look at that bullshit traffic. Welcome to Austin, y'all. Pay your taxes. Enjoy your craft beer. Okay, you're supposed to yield to me. Thank you. The light screen. And I think what we'll do is... Oh, shoot, we got to move over to the right. I think what we'll do is we'll exploit the slow people here. <coughs> That's what we'll do. Slightly illegal, but what's happening is these people are on their phones and so they create a gap and then they don't accelerate fast enough to make the light so I make it for myself you know, it used to be easier to get around Austin but they designed this stuff for a lot less traffic and now they've screwed themselves I'm on the corner of terrible and worse Uh, all right, I gotta stop hating on Austin, but you know it's not it's not uh, it's easier said than done. All right, we're still charging even at the red light, 187 mile total range, which is pretty accurate these days. And charge, 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 charge. It's an interesting car. I'm I'm still entertained by it. I'm not totally turned off like I was with the uh, Acura MDX. It's just strange. This thing is so strange. It's pulling me in for some reason. <sighs> Out of the stop and go traffic, probably going into another pocket of it. The uh, 200 mile update here is I've already had a full tank of gas and still have no range on the battery, but I have 177 combined. So it is what it is. This is a an okay car until you get to the phone section or the voice control, and you realize voice commands, you can't even say call mom. There is no there is no voice command for the... Ooh, look at the tailgate on that Porsche. Someone bumped into that. Anyway, you can't uh, call mom. You can't just say call mom. It won't work. Anybody who's, who's in your phone book, it won't recognize them, which is sad. And then, of course, you can't have text messages on here either. So that's also sad. Um, if I show you the phone... and. and uh, phone. All you have is basically, uh, you know, phone numbers. There's no, there's no, there's whatever the hell this stuff is, and then your favorites, and then you can make a dial out. That that's it. There's no messages, no nothing else. Pretty sad. But now we're back in that stop and go on Regen Five, and uh, let's see, play some music here. Enjoy. Check that out. Wow. Too bad it's being pulled by a tundra. All right, this is Austin, Texas, and I'm on South Congress heading towards downtown, so I'm going north. And, uh, well, there is a DC fast charger in Austin, or at least there was the last time I had an electric uh, car that could take fast charging. That was a BMW i3 way back in 2017. So this thing actually has two, this Mitsubishi has two 
charging uh, types. It has a uh, J1772, which is your typical level 2 charger. And then it has a DCFC, also known as Chatamo. And Chatamo might be the future, but this car is future-proof because it's got both charging styles. And, uh, well, I'm going to find that fast charger, see if it's still there. And we're going to give it a full charge. Today's Sunday, so I'm going to see if I can get a full battery and then drive it back to Dallas tonight. And instead of doing 105 miles an hour or whatnot, what not, I'm going to do like 65, 70. And even though that's slower than the speed limit, I'm going to see if that speed, 65, 70, will actually charge the battery uh, in charge mode as we go along. So here we are on Congress. <clears throat> kind of a slow Sunday afternoon. It's six o'clock. And I am feeling much better, if you couldn't tell. So we'll get to uh, our destination. The charging station near the old power plant on Electric Drive, I think it's called. Well, that place is hopping. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there is a caveat to all of this, and I'll tell you that caveat when I get there. Man, I'm smelling home slice pizza. It smells really good. What does that sign look like to you? <laughs> funny place. What a funny place. Yes, Austin has changed. Like, they raised all the old buildings that were here, and they put in this big thing. Uh, the person who owns the Austin Motel basically bought all that back there in that mirror and rebuilt it. Some dude playing Frogger here. All right. I'm going to go cross the bridge. That's what I'm going to do. I guess I'll give you the tour that I didn't give you when I had that Lexus LC. Because it was raining and I was pretty damn sick. Yeah, very nice out here. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, February 15th and it's 73 degrees out. If you visit Austin, do not visit in the summer. It's just too damn hot. And everyone's standing on the bridge waiting for the bats to come out, which doesn't happen until later. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, we're going to make a left here. The, uh, the, uh, Austin Marathon was this weekend, so they've got a bunch of streets cut off, and it's a little crazy right now. All right, I'll catch up with you when I get to the charging station. It's a couple minutes away. All right, we're on Cesar Chavez. You'll see I have zero range of electric, and the charging station, they've done a lot of changes here on whatever street that is. Uh, the charging station is right over here somewhere. I just don't remember where I am because it doesn't look familiar to anything I remember. I might need to take a right. <sighs> or I go up one more block. Can't tell. That's the po old power building over there, that building right there. But, uh... Oh yeah, Seaholm something. Seaholm Residence. Do I make a right there? No. No, I make a right over here somewhere. Here we go. This is the right. Okay, and there's a fast charge station. It's 
glow, glowing blue. And why am I not surprised there's no parking? Or there is, right there. <clears throat> I guess I'll just make a U-turn by going into the roundabout. And then, I mean, I don't see any electric cars coming the other way, so... Go for it. I know how to use a roundabout. Does that truck? Nope. Okay, so how do I park in a spot like this when the Tesla's parked like that? Good question. I guess I'll just have to put it in reverse. Good thing I got that 360 camera. You kind of need it with an electric vehicle. Plus, I need to get as close as I can to the charging ports anyway. So there we go. The next step is to try and charge it. And it's pay to park on this. So if I'm paying for the charge, does that mean I've paid to park? Okay, so EV charging only, plug in everywhere, 30 minute DC fast charger, disconnect switch, in use. Okay, so I guess I can use this one and plug it in right there. And then I'm going to use this port right here. It's already charging, so I have to wait. And it's added six miles at $1.21 a kilowatt hour, 16.6. So it can only do one at a time, even though there's two. <sighs> Which one is that? It's not even the same one. This is disappointing. So the green one is the wrong one. The blue one is the one I have to compete with all the leaf drivers. At a dollar forty forty one. Uh this none of this makes any sense to me. Okay. Well I guess we'll have to wait like twenty minutes if he unplugs in twenty minutes. Cedar Park Leaf. This is where we are, and it's useless. I'll give it a couple minutes. There's also a charger right there, but the Tesla's on it. And it's not a fast charger like the one behind me. So I guess I'll just wait. So it has occurred to me that the last time I was here, this was the uh, BMW i3 that I had. I tried using this charger because it's the only charger, the one behind me, it's the only DC fast charger on ChargePoint network in Austin. And back then it was out of service. And now it's full. So I just have to keep waiting. And I realize the whole point of this exercise is pretty stupid because uh, I have a gas engine. Which means I don't have to actually charge the car. And of course, while I'm waiting here to uh, charge, there's random people taking photos of a Tesla Model X. Just randomly. It's kind of weird. And while I'm sitting here waiting, uh, I'm like, oh, I could light up a little cigar here, my little Illusione Rothschild. However, <laughs> I don't know, I guess you can smoke in a park in Texas, but not in Austin. 
And the funny thing is that sign right there that says, please breathe. So I guess I'm not the only one who's sitting here in my car waiting for the charger to be available. And sitting here going, I guess I'll just smoke a cigar. Because by the time that bonehead gets back, I might be able to charge my car. But I guess that's the beauty of having a plug-in hybrid. Because you don't always have to use it on EV only. You can use the engine and just go. What is that? Is that the new Fusion? Can't tell. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see uh, what happens here. Something tells me this whole EV parking area hasn't been flushed out. Because if I see the signs over there, it says there's a handicapped parking spot. And it says parallel parking only. But that's not parallel parked. And then if I look up here, it says parallel parking only. And then it says... Citation will be issued for parking against traffic flow. But uh, some of this uh, weirdness is that that is an extra charger right there. And it won't reach my car parked here, which is properly parked on the street, because it's only reachable by the DC fast charger. So this is only, like, that Tesla is really screwing us up, because if he was properly parked, he or she, whatever, probably a she at this point, if she was properly parked, then I would be able to properly park to use that charger. So... I'm not sure what I'm still doing here. Let's see what the status of the uh, leaf is. A lot of people walking around here too. Sketchy guy on a bench over there. Sitting in a park, drinking his 40 or whatever. Playing with himself, probably. And then a bunch of people riding bikes. Although those aren't kids. Sick move, bro. Uh, and a lot of traffic. Let me see what the leaf is up to. Ninety-eight percent. He went. He paid sixteen. He paid six dollars and sixteen cents to go eighteen miles. Well, at this point, I'm glad I'm not driving 100% EV because I'd be screwed if I had like an I-Pace or something and I had to wait. I don't have to wait, but I'm, I'm going to wait a few more minutes. We'll see. There's your leaf owner in the mirror there. Oh, thank God. Okay, well, perfect timing there. I'm going to let them move and then I'm going to take that charger point. There she goes. Bye. Bye. And then I'm going to plug it in. And we'll see how long it takes to get to a full charge. And the beauty is we're going to see how much it costs. And Mitsubishi is going to pay for it. Thanks, Mitsubishi. I feel like it's going to cost about a dollar a mile. But we'll see. There's the window sticker. We'll go over that when I finish plugging it in. All right, there goes the leaf. And tap your phone or charge card below. Okay, so I need this one. Nope. I need this one. Well, shit, I guess I have to open this up first. And then this one. have to do a bit of a cable dance just to get it over here. And then we plug it in. Like that. Alright. I like it. There we go. <laughs> I 
I like that this is lit. Okay, let's see what it says. Eighteen point seven kilowatt hours is the charge rate, and the battery is at thirty one percent. It didn't say that in the car. It's interesting. So I wonder what the cost is. 31%, 32%. One mile added. Well, that was fast. And still zero dollars. I don't think it's going to tell me. 32 Okay, got a battery status there, but it doesn't say, or it doesn't show. Let's see if I hit the power button. It doesn't really say much yet. It doesn't say I can't drive away either. <laughs> it doesn't tell me it's plugged in. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, I'll let it sit here, and eventually it'll be full. Note the time, 6.37, and we'll see what happens. So I guess getting in the car and starting it... Let's do this again. I guess getting in the car and starting it turned it off or unscrewed it up? I don't know. There we go. Crazy. Zero percent. Thirty-five percent. Okay, well, I don't know how much that cost, but I didn't pay for it. <laughs> weird. Really weird. I'm gonna go for a walk. It's the walk button. Waste of time. Okay, I wasted some time doing some shopping. <laughs> and I'm gonna walk back to the car. We'll see in 10 minutes if it fully charged it. I'm kind of shocked it said 33% or whatever on the battery, so. The car is lying to me, or the charger's lying. But we'll see. Is it a dollar a minute to go? I mean, sorry, is it a dollar a mile to use the fast charger? Not that I needed to, but the whole point was the car is future proofing itself by using Chatamo, but I think it's a waste, a complete waste. Okay, here we go. Fourteen miles added, two dollars and eighty-two cents. Well, that's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Can't open my trunk, of course. Stupid. I hate these one-door open policies on the keys. What I'll do is wait a couple more minutes. See if that can get up to 100%. It's actually registering properly there, too. Huh. Alright, so I'm sitting in here eating a, a snack. <clears throat> Whatever the hell these are. Bene wafer cookies. Made of semisemi or crap or whatever. And the car was making like a sizzling sound. Like a boiling sound. It was really weird. And then a fan went on. And then it all turned off. <clears throat> so, uh, I think I'm going to get out and see what the status is. I don't see the battery here now, so that's weird. 
Did it stop charging on its own again? It looks like it did. Yeah, it stopped on its own. Well, let's try this again. I didn't unplug it, it's still plugged in. Well, will it go full? That's the thing. Alright, so it added a mile and it's at 82%, so it's still going. But only at 10.9 kilowatt hours, and it's supposed to be a 62.5 kilowatt hour fast charger. Oh, 9.9, .9, it's slowing down. 9.2. This is weird. <clears throat> I locked it, just in case that affects it. I don't hear any weird noises. And you can see the status light there. Blue is charging. Electric vehicle parking only. I guess you could park here and not have to pay to park. Something like that. Eighty-four percent, still one mile, and using uh, nine point two kilowatt hours. Weird. Eight point nine. Five sets, 56 cents. I don't even know what the last charge was. This is ridiculous. Still though, all this pain and it's still not full. I'll give it 10 more minutes. Okay, so you'll see the math now. Two miles, 86 cents. So it's 43 cents a mile, which was a lot more than it would cost using gasoline to charge the car. 45 cents a mile, 45 and a half, not looking good. 51 cents a mile, oh, it's getting really bad. Ouch. Okay, it completely stopped on its own. I'm sitting here outside, and basically it was 21 cents a minute, $1.69, and it gave me three miles of range. So it's more than 50 cents a mile, which is absolutely bullshit. Oh, well, there you go. That's interesting. Waste of time. And there's a train passing over there. Sure, I'll get the disease from the handle on that thing. <coughs> Amtrak. Okay. Get in and see what this thing says. Close to full. I am more interested in seeing what this feels like now that it's got close to a full charge. Energy flow. There you go, 28 miles of range on electric and very close to full, but I don't I don't see the status. I don't know what the status is. We will never really know. Although I could go back 
and see, I guess, the charge amount. Uh, nope. Energy monitor, flow, trip, fuel history, electricity consumption. Yeah. None of this makes any sense. This is all a waste. That's why uh, it's better just to get in and drive it, not pay any attention to anything. But we'll see uh, as I go when the traffic moves up. Uh, we'll see if, if 65 on the freeway and charge mode when we get there will be better for uh, actual successful charging on the freeway in this thing. Geniuses. Okay. Oh, what a waste of time this place is. Hmm. I guess we'll have to get on the freeway and make a right. And of course my HVAC is still off. Some of the sacrifices I've made here are for longer ranges to keep the HVAC off. I've actually, I should open the sunroof. There we go. Which is only available on the GT, by the way. You could get the SEL, but you wouldn't have the sunroof, which is a big mistake, because without a huge uh, opening panel to vent out the air, you'd have to use your windows, and then I think the sunroof would be a little bit more efficient. Okay. <clears throat> 27 miles, so we've gone like 100 yards and we've already lost a mile on the range. Wasn't it at 28 before? Still a total range 217. We have three quarters of a tank of gas. So even with electric um, in the city, it makes sense. But when we get on the freeway, it's not going to be good. Pretty sure of it. Oh, I'm going to hit save. So save will keep that battery at this level for the freeway basically but we'll use it and and we'll see uh if it will if it will help us and then we'll go into charge mode yeah we'll keep electric on the freeway as long as possible to kind of see how much it will deplete or if it will stay full hold on a second there we go you know what i'm thinking here as i'm leaving downtown heading to the freeway is maybe save mode which isn't really saving any of the battery because now we're down to 26 what if I put it in charge mode? See if we can charge it to 100%. Let's do that instead. So it's in charge mode. You can see there it says charge. And uh, the engine's not on. Now I can't run charge and save at the same time. <clears throat> we just crossed Congress. Now we're heading towards... Uh, Rainy Street. We're across from the that hotel there. Okay, now the engine's on. I want to see if that can get up to the 100% range. So I don't know why that says 26 miles of electric range and the uh, window sticker says twenty two according to the EPA. Right there, all electric range, 22 miles, 26 miles according to the car. But it is charging, that's a good thing. Welcome to Austin, green lights everywhere. This is why sitting in a charger, even at home or in a public parking space, is a waste of time. We're going to have to sit here. Is uh, because I could put this in charge mode, and as we're sitting here in traffic, it could be charging. Although it's not charging at the red light. Still in charge mode, by the way. And I'm on eco. I have it in eco mode. What if I put eco mode? Put it on. Now we're normal. It's harder to see at night. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get to 100%. It's not caring at all. 
So what I'll do is uh, put it in save. And we'll see how save can retain everything. I'm not going to bore you with all this Austin crap. I'm now getting on the freeway in Austin on a Sunday night. Uh, we're about to head out to Dallas. Uh, it is 7.19 at night. There's Austin. You can see the frost tower and everything. And we are moving. We are just moving here on the freeway. <clears throat> wow. This is blistering. I don't know how these people can cope with all this speed. Oh my god. This is insane. We're doing an entire 15 miles an hour. How are we supposed to get a good look of everything going this fast? Uh, there's the downtown, and then there's the east side, which I do not recommend at all. Unless, of course, you want to get sick or mugged or sick. Wow. What an eclectic place, man. Wow. But it's okay. Soon we'll be heading into a more capital, capitalist capitalism, less socialist place. More dangerous to some of these Austinites. <laughs> can, I, can I rub it in any more than that? We're going to move over one lane. Is that beep, 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 beep? That's my uh, blind spot monitor. Oh, yeah. A solid 30 for a half second. That felt good. By the way, 25 mile range, and it's charging. We have it on save, and it's charging, so it's it's trying. There's no GPS on this car, so it's not like it can determine where we are to see what it needs to do, but it's doing its job, and I'm in normal mode, not eco. Just getting in and driving. We'll see how long it takes for save mode to give up. I don't think we're going to have 25 miles by the time we get out of here. Okay, we're finally moving. We just passed 183. Oh, on the side road here, there's a nice fender bender. That's great. Lots of traffic leading up to that. Uh, you'll see we've done 270 miles, which means we've done about 70 uh, thereabouts since we filled up when we were coming into Austin, and now we're leaving Austin having done 70, I think. We've done uh, probably about a fifth of tank of fuel, so we have four fifths left, and that's a little bit of a disparity, and you'll wonder, like, oh, what kind of fuel economy was that? And I'd say, well, yeah, that fuel economy is a result of when we filled up in Austin, we came down in stop-and-go traffic, and we're stuck in that all the way, and now we're leaving we left and stop and go, and now it's finally opening up. We're doing a whopping 60 miles an hour, so we still have, even though we've done a couple miles now, 25 miles of range on the battery, and we're doing 60, so it's ba it's able to maintain that here in save mode, and we're going to keep a monitor on that. We're at exit 243. I'm not sure... I'm probably going to fill up this tank at mile marker 240, uh, 275, and then uh, after that fill up, we will ease straight down into, or straight over into Dallas. They pick this car up tomorrow, so I don't really need to fill it up with a full tank of fuel, but I'll have enough fuel to make the trip. Well, <clears throat> this is probably not good, but I just turn on the HVAC, and uh, the range dropped to 19 miles, just like that. I wonder what happens if I turn it off. Well, look at that, it goes to 25. So, six miles of range is impacted by the uh, use of the air conditioning system. Oh, we've got up because of the regen here from the downhill. Anyway... I think it's unreasonable in a family car to, to say that, oh, don't use the HVAC system. You should be able to use it 
is so that everyone in the car, especially in the summer, that's ridiculous here in Texas, to think that no one's going to use it. Luckily, it's 69 degrees outside, so right now it's it's fortunately uh, not too hot, not too cold. I can just run without the air on, but you'll see there's a there's an impact using it. Dun, 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 dun. We're near exit 275, so before I exit, I just want to show you. I've been doing 65, 70-ish behind these big rigs. The speed limit here is 75. And the construction zone, though, is 65. And I'm still in safe mode, still under normal. And our range on battery, still 25. HVAC, off. And exit 275. So I'm going to get off here, fill that tank up. You'll notice it did drop. It's very close to uh, three-fifths now, and 199-mile total range, although I do not believe that. What I'm going to do is say that hold mode or save mode, save mode works when you go below 70 miles an hour on the freeway and have the HVAC off. Now we're going to fill it up, and then we're going to do 60-70-ish with charge mode on, and we'll see if we can increase... Now that's going to go down a little bit. I think we're going to lose some range as we get back on the freeway. But I want to see if charge mode will bring it back up and then exceed and get us to full. So here we go. We're going to get off right here. Fill up there at the Shell station. And give it a whirl. It's really confusing, by the way, to have the charge port on the right and the fuel tank on the left, same kind of rear door thing uh, near the near the tailgate. Uh, some cars put the charging ports up near the front or in the grill, and I gotta say the Mitsubishi system with it in the rear is very complicated, because it's like, is that the gas or the electric, or the gas or the electric? Especially if you're doing it all day, every day, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get some gas today, or... Oh, I charge up every night. Like, I, I would still get confused. All right, we'll go uh, over there. Well, interesting stuff over here. <clears throat> okay, so, nice Integra. It's pretty dope. Uh, let's see, 303.9 miles so far. And if I go to trip B... 476.9 total. We average 32.7. Hmm. Wait a second. What was that? Was that a full marijuana leaf? Nope. Okay. Alright, that works for me. Okay, full tank. And this time I got a receipt. There it is. $10.84. And 5.16 gallons. So, uh, you know that's that's really cheap. It's like two dollars and ten cents. Yeah, two ten a gallon. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how much electricity that was, but you know, we you know the EPA numbers in the window sticker doesn't work out, does it? All right, let's hit the road. Normally, I get my coffee here, but I feel I may have made an error by not getting coffee. And also because I am wearing shorts, and I'm sure it's going to be colder than 64 degrees in Dallas when I get there tonight. But I really don't have a choice, do I? So, uh, yeah. We still got the HVAC off. Let's put on energy flow there. Stupid thing. It, like, is the most sensitive screen. There we go. And we're not in save mode, so let me put it in save. Here we go. And we'll get up on the freeway, and then we'll put it in charge mode. Clear to go. You can see there with the eco stat there, the uh, tachometer that isn't a tachometer that I'm not flooring it, just being very, very gentle. We're still doing EV acceleration. 25 miles is still our range. We're going to get on the freeway here. And I'm going to go down into charge mode. So here we go. Charge mode is active. You can see 
It's doing its thing. We dropped to 24 miles on the range. 350 total miles. Still think that's a lie. And as we try and merge, which is really important to have a fast car in Texas, we're going to get on a like fast car like that. All right. Here we go. 70. We'll stay right behind this truck. For you hypermilers, the sacrifices I make. We'll stick between 65 and 70 and see how effective that charging is. Will it keep charging all the way to 100% or past 26? Uh, or, you know, like it gave up at 26 miles when we were in downtown Austin. So will it, will it keep charging? And then if it stops, I guess I'll just put it back on the save mode and just keep driving that way. Uh, you know, the weird thing is the electric motors, the front and rear electric motors, do not seem to add any performance boost to this vehicle. And it's not like your typical newer age hybrids where they're performance hybrids. This is just a still like a fuel economy style car. So I guess I'll sacrifice some time here like I did at the charging station to get you more real world results. My world is worst case scenario. So think about it like that. I appreciate all of you hanging in here, watching all this. I'm trying to be as thorough as possible to accommodate all types of viewers if you haven't figured that out already. So, uh, you know, this car is, you know, it was shocking when I first got it. I, like, had to figure it out. Now that I figured it out, I thought I figured it out, but I didn't figure it out. I don't think anyone ever will figure this thing out. And that's going to be the future of these vehicles. It's just how easy are they to live with? Uh, I wouldn't use a fast charger, that's for sure. I don't think it's relevant to have a fast charge Chatamo adapter. I do think it's easier to just fill it up with gas and go. So far, so good there. Still a 24 mile range. And I don't hate this car. I don't really love it. There's just something about the both the combination of hating it and loving it that makes me just just kind of feel like I don't really have too many mutual thoughts about this car other than, you know, if I lived in the city, I'd probably have one. Not this one, of course, uh, but a plug-in hybrid in general. This one isn't bad if you've got a need for an SUV. Another Integra over there with the white wing. Huh. Crazy. Two Integras must be kind of like a Japanese rice run or something, whatever they're doing. Import JDM run to Dallas. Kind of cool. This should be just as cool as that if they use the hybrid as performance, right? The ride quality is decent in here. I have no complaints over the rough roads of Dallas or Austin or the speed bumps of parking lots. It's not sporty at all. It's comfortable. And the steering is very vague and uh, almost like an argument, and it doesn't go <laughs> doesn't go over very well with me in cornering. And let's see, 25 miles, so we are gaining. And uh, S2000 and uh, Nissan Z over there, some cool stuff going by. Let's see. Yeah, I'll keep it right here. Right at this level, behind this truck, 67, 8 miles an hour. I'll catch up with you when we have any more interesting information. Alright, status update time. We, uh, we've we been staying around 65. Definitely not going below 65 miles an hour. And definitely not going over 70 miles an hour, even though the speed limit here is 70. Look at that charge mode has been gaining on the battery. So we're at mile marker 289. And well, that means we've done 14 miles and we gained a few miles in range on electric battery. Which is nice. Uh, you'll notice here on the GT model that we have LED headlights, but there's also no high beam. So there's a button on the side to put in an auto high beam, 
which I can't show you. But if I push my stock forward, I can't. There's, I can only pull back to flash. So the, the auto high beam is one fo- uh, uh, weird thing. There's no like permanent high. You have to hit a button on the side to do that. And then there's a little ring that turns on fog lights. I'm already going slowly. So no need to move over. In Texas, you got to move over or slow down for disabled vehicles, but 75, I'm doing 65, so it's 10 miles, it's better. Uh, yeah, so this thing is is kind of like, you know, future-proofed with that Chatamo charge plug. It's got auto high beams that work very well. It's got LED headlights, uh, quilted leather seats, four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, whatever you want to call it, even though it's electric. Um, and this thing is just so weird. It's a weird vehicle. And, and it's like, is this, is this the future of all Mitsubishis? I think it would be yes. I, I would love to see a performance version of it. I know they can do it. They can pull it off. But for this, I mean, driving now in a efficiency way, efficient, more of an efficient way than, than the drive to Austin was going back to Dallas here, like, in within a reasonable highway speed and in charge mode and, and normal and I'm I'm actually like impressed. You gotta try. You gotta put some effort in to get to this. But it's working. Okay. I'm having a hard time figuring out how I'm gonna stay awake for the next two hours, so since uh sleepy driving, drowsy driving is really dangerous, I'm gonna go to the truck stop right there at Love's and get some coffee. We are at 27 miles. I saw it hit 28 once. And it's been kind of fluctuating between uh, all electric and charging. So I think what it knows is it knows it's going downhill. And it, even in charge mode, it's been using the batteries to go downhill even when I'm in drive or B0 or B1, just using some regen. So it's doing some slick stuff. And I think... In the end, it's like, don't even try and figure any of this out. Just get in it and drive it. That's the best way to enjoy it. You don't need to enjoy it by nerding out. No one likes nerds. But 65 miles an hour seems to be a pretty good spot. I'm going to pull off. It's going to uh, probably impact something. You'll notice I'm getting 32.2 MPGs average. Well, the window sticker, oddly enough, let me pull that up. Window sticker says 25. There you go. So I'm doing better than the EPA number on the gas side of it, but on the MPGE, which is the uh, miles per gallon equivalent, I'm not doing that well. I didn't really think this through. To get back onto the freeway in this direction that I need to go, uh... Oh, I guess I can go that way? Is that a one-way road? Hmm. Is this turnaround a two-way street? Yes, it is. I love these Texas U-turns. So efficient. But we can't go... No, we can only go one direction on the side road. Clear. Huh. See, I don't have navigation, so there must be a side street to get to that bridge. Well, I'm having to go down that way for miles and turn around. All right, see, now it's all electric, even in charge mode. Here are the auto headlights, by the way, if they turn on, which they won't, but they're on. A little green icon down there shows you that. I don't want fuel. I just want, well, human fuel. Coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. On-site laundry. That's interesting. Truck stops are pretty damn good if you think of them as airports. Rather than, like, seedy places where you can pick up hookers. Because I've never picked up hookers at truck stops. Don't even know where to start. Park. Brake. 28 miles. Look at that. So charge mode has been working. Good to know.
customer 54. Your shower is ready. Please proceed to shower bond. I didn't realize this place had the awesome coffee machines. That is a uh, surprise. All right, we're going to put it back in charge mode. And the engine's not turning on automatically, but I'm sure it will as we get on the freeway. So I don't see another route because I don't have my map on me. But hey, you know, we'll just, we'll just take the long way home. Still in battery mode. Okay. I wish I had a GPS map on here. Uh, even with Android Apple, Android Apple, Android Auto Apple CarPlay, if you had it plugged in, you couldn't pull this screen up for the battery stuff. So think about that. Okay. Dog park. Huh. 235. Okay. Two north 35 left. Oh, okay. Even better. Hey, look at that. This place is so professional. And I think it's because, you know, time is money. A lot of trucks here refueling. It's a busy, busy time here at the Love's Truck Stop. <laughs> Crazy. I miss these days when I had diesel vehicles to drive. Maybe I could try 4x4 four four here in this big pond. Alright, let's go. Someone loves their truck horn. Or actually, that could be a train on the other side. I don't know. It's pretty freaking loud. All right, we'll get back on the freeway. Looks like there's some kind of activity on there. I don't know, road construction, something. Doesn't affect us. If we look here, uh, range 352, electric range 27, and 32.6 uh, is the average. Still not using the gas engine. It did kick in a little bit. Not too concerned yet. I don't think cross traffic stops. Huh. Nope, cross traffic does not stop. Good to know. Also, when you're in this car, when you come to a complete stop, the electric motor is off. But if you creep or something uh, like this, take your foot off, it's actually using power, even though I'm not moving. Oh, okay. I want to show you the high beams. So if I push the button here on the side, there's a button right in there. If I push that, it'll activate auto high beams, but there's no way to actually push forward on this. I can pull back. But, oh, there we go. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> the whole thing was misunderstood. All right, engine's back on, range is down to 26. We're accelerating, it's charging, it's all good. All right, back up to 65, 70-ish. Hey, I did see a uh, lot of Civic, I mean, uh, Integra Type R's. 
uh, they all passed, so, uh, missed some cool stuff heading up to Dallas there, 25 mile electric range, and here we are on the freeway, no rest to Dallas. Alright, my Waco update here is 32.3 MPG average and still 26 miles electric range. We are in charge mode and uh, traffic's been pretty good through Waco, no complaints here. I have been using cruise control and it hasn't done much, it hasn't really helped and it hasn't really hurt fuel efficiency or charge mode. One thing I found interesting was in charge mode and uh, using cruise control, which is radar cruise in the GX, by the way, I couldn't use the paddles to add or remove uh, regen. So I can't control the, uh, the uh, regen possibilities. It's just a fixed thing. So if you use cruise, radar cruise at least, in the GX, or the, sorry, the GT, uh, trim, you are uh, unable to fine-tune things. It's just push, plug and play, PhD, push here, dummy. It just does it. It's automatic. How about that? Automatico. Charge mode. 26, still charging. You can see the gas engine is powering the front wheels. Well, we're doing all sorts of stuff. And, uh, yep, yeah, on our way. On our way. B1, too. Uh, B1 regen mode seems pretty decent on the freeway. Zero is sailing, and uh, you don't gain anything like I'm gaining now on zero. So this is a pretty cool, very easy-to-use setting, B1, for regen. Tesla charging stations right there too which of course we cannot use my instinct is to pass but we're just going to sit low down oh those are some bright lights in your face as you come Whew. that's crazy I can't see there we go alright I want to try and get up to 28 if not a full charge, we are so close, so close, let's see if we can do it, we got like 100 miles left, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening right now, but my range is dropping significantly, I'm still in charge mode, and we've been doing 70, 75, and it went up to like 27, and then all of a sudden dropped down to 23. And I don't understand what the drop was about. I didn't add a uh, track. I didn't turn anything on. And we're just cruising along. It just decided to use the battery. So I think what it's doing is it's like cycling the battery just to uh, allow it to charge better. I don't know. But so far, let me accelerate more. the floor at least and you can see it's been using the battery and I try and get it to charge again it's so weird here we are doing 75 which the speed limit is 75 and it seemed to have done well and then just all of a sudden just nothing and we are in B1 regen mode I'm going to keep an eye on this just seems like once you hit 80 miles an hour, something changes. Let's see, we're not even regen. Totally coasting here, and nothing's adding to the battery. So, if I change to B2, there we go. Let's 
go, go back down into drive mode. So now we're in drive. Strange. And we, now we've lowered down to 60-ish miles per hour. Oh yeah, we need to get back up to 27 at least. Alright, I'm back behind some trucks now doing about 70. Some construction crew. Uh, I'm coasting, but it's not doing any regen and the engine's off. And I'm in B1. Now I put my foot on it. Engine's back on. We're getting 24 miles of range now. So, I think what's happening is that the freeway speed, like over 70 miles an hour, the, there's just no uh, fuel efficiency with the aerodynamics. And we're at 32 mpg average, so it did drop. And our battery drops. I think that what happened was we went 75, 80 without a truck in front of us. And the battery was compensating and being used to keep us going at those freeway speeds, which explains why on the way down to Austin I never charged, because 80 plus miles an hour, the gas engine's going, but it's also leaching off the battery. I think that's the thing. So below 75 miles an hour, which is funny because in most of the diesel vehicles, below 74 miles an hour, you still would get a decent return on fuel economy. So here we are, kind of at the same wall of efficiency is 74, 75 ish. But behind these trucks, 70 miles an hour or so, it's not even going to regen. I don't know. That, that should go up. That number, 24, should go up now to 27 or so. And when I get to um, closer to downtown, I want to go into Fear. Uh, fear fury? Full EV mode, pure, fear, pure, pure, and full uh, EV, so that the EV driving percentage goes from 30 to 35, maybe. <sighs> we shall see. Got cruise control set to 65. We've got radar locked on the truck in front. We're doing 62, 64, whatever. 23 miles. It's been dropping in charge mode. So, uh, what I'm going to do is take it out of charge mode. There we go. And we'll see what happens over the next one mile marker 391. So we'll see what happens over the next uh, 40 miles. I'm about 41 miles from downtown Dallas. I've got a 240 mile, 245 mile combined range, which means it should say 200 when I get to Dallas. So the question would be, oh, C22, it's already dropping, and my HVAC is off, and the temperature is still 64 degrees out. I have no idea what's going on. What I will uh, assume, though, is that I'm getting better fuel economy, or fuel economy, better uh, electric range, charging, capability. Oh, no, see, now it's not 22. I'm going to put charge back on. All right, charge is back on. Uh... I think what's happening is the battery was able to charge on the way up here to Dallas because I had close to a full charge, whereas on the way to Austin I had no charge, so it had nothing. It, it had no, uh, no, no, no something. I think that's the big deal. If you're going to plan a road trip, start with a nearly topped up battery, use charge mode on the freeway. Don't hit 70 or 75 miles an hour, which is impossible in Texas. And I think you'll be fine if you use save mode rather than charge. But you can see, like, we dropped in only, like, a mile 
at 65 miles an hour. So this is not really a road trip vehicle. I mean, that's obvious, but the uh, hybrid aspect of it to be able to avoid plugging in and charge doesn't doesn't seem to work. And uh, I'm not sure what your range would be on gas. Well, I know what it is. It's 200 miles, basically. Although we've been done very well this time on the way up to Dallas as opposed to back down to Austin. And I think that also happens to be because of our our battery capacity when we started. And I'm not going to fill this tank up because this car goes in tomorrow, but uh, 32.1 seems about right at this point. So it's weird. This car is useless when the battery is low. It's very handy when the battery is nearly topped up because it just sort of cycles through. It does a good job at cycling. Well, I'm still behind that truck, and we've been doing 55, 60 miles an hour, and it still says 23 miles in charge mode. So what I did was I turned on the heated seat, and I'm trying to see if that's going to impact the ability for it to keep charging, because it's not charging. If I put the auto on, it drops by one mile on the range, and if I turn it off... On the HVAC, it goes to 23. But you'll see, like, the battery looks nearly full. Not not as bad as uh, previous charge attempts. So I just don't get what's going on. Maybe it's, maybe it's just uh, balancing out or something. And when I get to uh, the downtown area, I'm going to go into EV-only mode, I think. I don't want to know if I can get 23 miles on EV, but I think it would be great to use some of this electricity that I earned by driving uh, and paying for the fuel, although Mitsubishi paid for the electricity, which was a lot of money for electricity. But we'll we'll get there, we'll get home, and uh, it's still charging. I'll give you my uh, final word on this thing. I'll give it to you now. This works for the city. It works if you're able to charge. I do not have the ability to do it at my house. And it's a decent ride. I do know that you can get a V6 engine version of this. I don't know why you would. But it it's a... Uh, I think my mom put it best when she saw this thing. She called it a she shed. I mean, all these SUVs are looking like she sheds lately. But this thing is a an electric she shed. So maybe it's better than others. That's up to you. I do know that the hybrid thing and the plug-in aspect and parking in some spots. Like, I had a parking spot, actually, on the street because it was an EV-only spot. And I could park there because I'm a plug-in hybrid. If I had a regular car, I couldn't park anywhere on the street. There was no parking. So in the city, exploiting that electric vehicle factor is what this thing's worth. But you can get the SEL trim or this one, the GT trim. And the GT trim includes like the LED headlights, the adaptive cruise, the sunroof, all that stuff that you want, and it stickers out at 43. It's a lot of money because I can get a Mazda CX-5 signature for that, all-wheel drive, and it's a much better car than this, although it isn't a plug-in hybrid. So then again, it's like, well, pick your poison. Okay, still in charge mode. Still at 23 miles. Uh, Let's put it in hold mode, or save mode. And go go from there. Uh, uh, Up there I see a ton of red lights. I think the freeway may be stopped. And that's going to suck. The only thing I can do is get off the freeway in the south of Dallas. Uh, Let's do it. Let's get off here. Hit cancel. We are going to reroute this bitch. 12 west. I 
I want to go 12 west. But I don't want to go in that traffic. Fuck. I think we'll take 12 west. What the hell is that up there? Alright. We'll go west and we'll take like a side road or something. <sighs> Good thing we got 23 miles of range on the battery. Not like I'm low on fuel. I'm used to doing fuel runs. Okay. We'll move over. Maybe... Maybe there's an alternative route. Okay, we're on an alternative route now. And I don't know where I-35 is. In a quarter mile, merge onto I-35 E North, US 67 North. How? Look at that, they closed down the freaking freeway there. I got lucky. I don't know why it's closed. This is closed. <clears throat> wow. See, it pays to pay attention to the road ahead. Freaky. Alright, back on track. And even with the diversion in save mode, we're down to 22 miles of electric range. And it's still charging it. And still doing its thing. It's all good. And I'm in eco mode now, too. We didn't get diverted that far, that long. And uh, I did the good thing getting off the freeway when I did. So eventually, what I'll in do... In half a mile, keep right at the fork to stay on I-35 E North. Yeah. I'll pop this baby into EV mode. I do like using EV mode in the morning to get coffee. Because it's almost like a guilt-free way to get coffee. I'm not burning any fuel to go get Keep a right cup of coffee. To stay on I-35 e North. Which, if you think about it, you know, any amount of fuel to go get a cup of coffee is pretty stupid. When you can make coffee at home and all that jazz, you know. But uh, when you work from home, you got to get out of the house. That's it. End of discussion. I do walk to lunch, too, from my house. Dallas is very convenient for me. Not for everybody. Okay, lots of construction here. Steering here is still pretty vague. Although I am in my lane. It... Uh, it's the body roll that makes it feel weird. Alright, I think it's time to uh, switch to EV. We're by the Dallas Zoo somewhere. Three, two, one, easy. Alright, EV mode activated. And there is beautiful skyline at night of Dallas. That's the uh, lane departure warning going nuts. Does it a lot in construction zones. It's always nice to come back to Dallas. <sighs> See the beautiful lights. And that in Omni Hotel. Mile, keep left at the fork to continue on I-35E. Now, if I was to connect Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to the, to the uh, car, I couldn't use the camera on my phone. So that's the that's the number one reason why I don't do that. Keep left at the fork to continue on I-35E. That hotel's bitching. Continue on I-35E for one mile. Lovely skyline. I think this is a better skyline than than uh, Houston or Austin. In 
Ring, half a mile. Take exit 428 Ford I-45, US 75. Take exit 428, then keep left at the fork. Keep left at the fork. Okay, 20 mile range. For one and a half miles. 20 miles of range, 32 and a half MPGs average. I'm hoping that the EV driving thing goes up, but you know. Not that likely. In a quarter mile, merge onto Texas 366 Spur East. Here comes another nice shot of Dallas at night. Continue on Texas 366 Spur East for one mile. I don't know if my phone picks up all this light appropriately, but it's awesome here. <coughs> this is the Perot Museum in the middle. Yeah. Lots of lights. This is cool. It's like LA, you know, the way that there's so much energy and stuff. And it's not glitzy and glammy like Vegas kind of thing. In half a mile, use the left two lanes to take the US 75 north exit toward McKinney. Got it. Well, I'm not going to bore you with the entire ride home, but I will tell you that now that we're back in the city, uh, fuel economy has gone up to 32.7. Range on the battery is 18 use miles. Use the left two lanes to take the US 75 north exit, then keep left. Which is plenty of range to get me home, because I'm not too far from downtown. And... Keep left. Yeah, this car is great for the city. You know, if you don't leave the city, you need a, a car to do this. This is great. The road trip thing, though, not, not, not so good. But I do, I do think that if you're going to do the road trip, start with a full battery. It seems to really be a benefit. It's, it behooves you to start with a full battery rather than a blank battery. But we tried, you know, we wanted to see certain things. Would a uh, dead battery be fully charged by the time we got all the way down to Austin, which was 240 miles? Nope. Was the fuel economy what we expected? Around 18 or 20 miles per gallon? No. So we are limited uh, with, a, with a low battery. But with the fuller battery, we seem to be uh, much better off. Speed limit downtown is 70. So we'll do 70. We're able to do that speed on all electric, by the way. And we're also in eco mode, which basically, uh, you know, changes the throttle mapping so you're not uh, blowing your load, electrical load, uh, to get off the line, but makes for a smoother drive anyway. I'm holding the camera by my hand. I didn't use my gimbal at all this trip. So my apologies for the shaky video, but if you stuck around this far, you are the best. You are definitely awesome. And I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate you coming along for the ride. I got more coming. Let me move over.
All right. It's pretty much the rest of the night. Is uh, a couple more miles, and I'm home. And definitely a different style review, different a different video from normal. It's my first electric vehicle road trip, actually. Uh, I've done hybrids before, but not plug-in hybrids that are full EV like this. I've had the Jag I-Pace. Couldn't do a road trip on that because I am limited to 500 miles on that press load. And I've done the BMW i3, but again, limited to 500 miles on a press load. So, yeah. Yeah interesting stuff thanks for watching